Naruto ran as fast as he could, tears streaming down his face, sobs escaping him every few seconds. All he ever wanted was to be respected, to become Okage, and to be known by the villagers, but it looks like it wasn't meant to be, stupid Kanoha, stupid villagers, after everything I did to get that jerk back, this is what they give me in return. He was so angry that he jumped from tree to tree to get farther away from Kanoha and deeper into the forest, stupid Sakura, she didn't even care that I almost died trying to keep my stupid promise, flashback, the unconscious body of Uchiha Sasuke was slung over Uzumaki Naruto's shoulder as he walked toward the village of Kanahagakur. Naruto was tired and hurt, and he was on his way to Kanoha, even with the big hole in his chest. Naruto was covered in cuts and scrapes, but the traitor Uchiha was only a little bit hurt from the fight, even though he was hurt. Naruto was proud. He had done it. He had defeated the great Uchiha Sasuke, and now... Everyone would be happy and cheer his name as he got closer to the gates. He could see that many of the villagers and his beloved Sakura-chan were waiting for them. They would have to respect him now that they had seen him beat the powerful Uchiha. Even though he was the last one to do so, he was impatient. Hey, Sakura-chan, I kept my prom dress, Naruto said in a happy voice, but he was cut off by Mr. Rock to the head, someone he had known since he was a child and who he often saw when he walked. Around the village, the villager who had thrown the rock yelled, Damn you! Demon, look what you've done to the last Uchiha. Naruto was so confused that he could only watch as Sakura ran up to him, grabbed the Uchiha off his shoulder, and gave him a hard punch in the face. Stupid Naruto Baka, I told you to bring him back to me, not try to kill him. I guess you really are a demon. Why don't you just die and leave us all alone? She screamed, holding Sasuke tightly and running toward the hospital. Naruto could feel tears coming to his eyes as he looked at the angry crowd in front of him. He could see the faces of many people he knew, like Kakashi and the other Jonin senseis who had returned from their missions while the retrieval team was gone, Ino, Tintin, and even Inada. All of them were part of the crowd that was yelling for his blood and drawing their weapons. This is what Tsunade and Jiraiya saw when they arrived. And they were angry, the angry Hokage yelled, what the hell is going? On here, as she clenched her fist in anger, it looked like Kakashi was the only one who was brave enough to answer her, Hokage-sama, that duh, he said, but when he saw the look in her eyes, he decided to play it safe, Naruto hurt his teammate Sasuke badly, this is proof that the QB is in charge, and Naruto needs to be punished for his actions, when Naruto heard this from his own sensei, he felt like he had just killed another Chidori, first Sakura-chan, and now Kakashi-sensei, I thought we... We're a team, a family, but it looks like even they think I'm a demon. Yeah, he needs to know his place. How dare he hurt Sasuke Kuen like that. When Ino heard Kakashi, she let out a loud scream. This made the rest of the crowd angry, and they all started shouting again. Yes, kill the evil spirit. Let's show him how it's done. He needs to know where he stands. Naruto felt more and more pain in his chest with every word he said. It felt like his heart was being torn apart, and he couldn't take it any. Longer, enough, Tsunade yelled as she flared her chakra to quiet the crowd. The Uchiha was a traitor. He turned on us to join Orochimaru. Naruto had every right to use force. If I were him, I would have just killed the jerk there and then to save everyone the trouble. She smiled at Naruto and then kept going. Come on, Naruto, let's get you to the hospital so that they can look at that wound. No, says the smaller blonde with fiery eyes. What? Tsunade was surprised and caught off guard by his answer. So she asked him, I said no, I'm done, I quit, even though I've helped this village for 13 years and helped them get over their losses, they still call me QB, I no longer care, so I quit, Naruto called out, he gave the crowd one last look filled with so much hate and anger that even the ninja in the crowd stumbled back, then he turned around and ran away, Tsunade gave the crowd her own death glare and whispered, I hope you're all happy now just loud enough for them to hear, the crowd ran away. When she looked at them, and all she could do was snort in disgust before turning to Jiraiya, pervert, go after him and make sure he's okay, when he's calmed down, bring him back, sure thing, Tsunadeheim, said Jiraiya with a smile, after that, they both jumped away, one to the village and the other to the forest, after a moment of silence, the crowd cheered, and some people danced while the rest jumped for joy, hooray, they cheered and smiled, the demon is finally gone, we're finally safe again. No, as soon as someone spoke, everyone stopped cheering and looked to see who it was. It was Kakashi. What do you mean Kakashi Senpai? Finally, the demon is gone, asked one of the Chunin. Have you not heard the Okage? If we don't do something, Jiraiya will just bring back the demon children. Kakashi growled and stalked toward the hospital. One of his students was hurt. After all, after the Kapinin said that, four of the best Jonin looked at each other and nodded. They then took off into the forest to find Naruto. End of flashback. 
Naruto landed on a thin branch a few miles from the village. He sat down to rest and let his wounds heal. After all, it's hard to run when you have a hole the size of a fist in your chest. As soon as he let himself relax, he felt a pull in the back of his mind, and the blonde fell asleep. The QB no Kitsune was very curious about his host's feelings, not because he could feel them, but because he could feel a lot of anger and hate, considering who is. Host is, this was a bit of a surprise. QB let a tendril of his chakra leak out of the seal because he was too curious. This let him tap into and see his host's memories from the last 30 minutes. QB couldn't help but smile when he was done looking at the memories. How interesting. I might be able to use this to my advantage. Oh, yes, the time of my ascension is coming up. Maybe the brat will be willing to make a deal now that he is no longer tied to that sad shack. The demon laughed as... Sneaky plans popped into his head one at a time. QB had a plan that he was sure his host wouldn't be able to say no to, so he sent out a second tendril to connect with Naruto's senses. This let him see the world through Naruto's eyes. As soon as the demon saw that Naruto was taking a break, it wrapped its chakra around Naruto's mind and pulled, forcing Naruto into the seal. Naruto could only sigh when he opened his eyes and saw the broken down sewer that had become his mindscape. Great. Just. Great. This is the last thing I need right now. Ugh. Let's go find out what the almighty fox in a box wants now with that. He stomped down the familiar path to his left, through the sewer, until he reached the QB's room, which was a big, open loom. Okay, you stupid fox, tell me what you want. I don't want to hear any of your crap right now. Naruto growled and stomped up to the big cage that held the demon back. Ha 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 ha. I see you're still not giving me the respect I deserve, Gaki, QB left, which was strange because the demon was usually angry every time they saw each other. You're damn right I do. Now hurry up and tell me what you want. If you haven't noticed, I'm kind of on the run and I don't have time to waste. Naruto answered, not caring about the demon's strange mood. Let's get down to business. Huh. The blonde's eyes blinked in surprise when QB said, fine, I called you here to make a deal. A deal, huh? I think my part of the deal is to let you go, right? Naruto asked, his eyes getting sharper, correct, QB said with a big grin and his rows of razor sharp teeth showing, what the hell was I thinking, I'll die, Naruto yelled back, fuming with anger, QB just laughed and moved around in his cell before answering, because, Gaki, if you take my offer, you'll be able to survive the unsealing, oh, is that right, Naruto muttered in disbelief, so, what are you waiting for, let's hear what you're offering, I'll get to the deal soon, but first I need to tell you, a few things so you don't have to ask me questions later, for now, be quiet and listen, okay? QB looked down at his small host and said, Yes, after getting a thumbs up, the demon kept going. You see, we beat you are not all demons. Instead, we are all parts of a bigger creature called the Yami. Yami was a god with a lot of power. It was the brother of Kami and Shinigami. But it didn't have much control over its power and almost no intelligence. It was just a crazy beast that wanted to destroy everything. And as the lord of the underworld, it had more than... Enough power to do so, Naruto couldn't help but listen with wide eyes as the storyteller told him a piece of history that few people have ever heard. Eventually, Kami and Shinigami worked together to defeat Yami. They were able to break it up into ten separate beings, which became known as the Biju. We didn't have tails when we were first born, but each of us had more or less power than the others. We were also much smaller than we are now. I was the second strongest, but I was only as tall as A. Young child, Shikaku, on the other hand, was the weakest and the smallest. The ten of us walked around the world and just lived together for a thousand years. In the end, my older brother, who was later called Jubi, got his first tail, but the rest of us didn't. With his first tail, Jubi got stronger, smarter, and bigger, and he became the leader of our small family after a thousand years. Jubi grew his second tail and I grew my first. This gave us both the same ability boost, so, for more than eight thousand years, we each grew a new tail. Getting bigger and stronger as we did, Shikaku was the last of us to get a tail. When Jubi got his tenth tail, he wanted to celebrate by killing a lot of people, which was a stupid idea now that I think about it. At this time, one of you humans found Chakra and started to study and play with it, hoping to get strong enough to stop the Jubi from killing everyone. This human made a powerful seal to stop Jubi. He was the first Jinchuriki and became known as the Rakudu Sinin. Naruto did nothing but gape in shock. First, he found out that the thing that was locked up inside him, the fox that everyone thought was a demon, was once part of a god. Then he found out that Kyuubi used to be a chibi fox, which made him laugh out loud, but he didn't because he was scared and wanted to hear the whole story. He finally found out that the most famous ninja ever, the one who invented everything ninja, was a Jinchuriki like him, even though there 
was a lot to take in, he kept listening as QB went on with his story on his deathbed. The Rakudu Sanin used the last of his power to split the Jubi into ten equal parts. He did this because he knew that the Jubi would be freed after he died. Nine of Jubi's parts were spread out around the world so that each of the remaining Biju could take them in. The last part stayed with the Sanin until he died. Taking the Jubi's mind with it, originally, each Biju was only supposed to reach A certain level of power and stop growing but thanks to the energy from juby we will all get one more tail than we were supposed to that's right i'll get a tenth tail rise to the gods as the new juby and take yami's place as lord of hell this damnable seal is the only thing that could stop me when i take the throne of juby i'll be strong enough to break this seal but if i did that i'd anger the shinigami and start a fight that would probably destroy your world and make the kami angry that wouldn't be good for me, so I want to make a deal with you. Well, that was an exciting story, Naruto said after a few minutes of stunned silence. Well, then, what's this deal? It better be a good one. QB laughed well. It's only as good as you make it, huh? The blonde asked in confusion. When I become the Jubi, I'll be able to grant you a wish in exchange for one tail's worth of power. Since it would only take me a few hundred years to get my power back, I think it's a fair trade. Here's the deal in exchange for my freedom i'll grant you nine wishes they can be skills fame money or anything else you want wow was all he could say i mean what else can you say when a soon-to-be god basically gives you anything you want that's a good deal a really really good deal but i have one question ask away how am i going to make it through the unsealing when do you get the last tale naruto asked because he wanted to know for sure before he agreed to this deal in a little over a year i'll have been around for ten thousand years and if you want to live forever you can't die from the ceiling when naruto heard this he couldn't stop the big grin that grew on his face oh you're probably right well it seems like we have ourselves a deal qb sama finally showing some respect eh the demon laughed and its loud laughter could be heard all around them in the sewer i figure we might as well get along since we're no longer enemies naruto smiled which is something he always does i think it's time for me to leave now i have a lot to think about and only a year to choose my nine wishes yes i guess it's time for you to go i can feel five chakra signatures coming toward you if you need it i'll give you some chakra so you can fight or run away qb sent a wisp of red chakra toward the blonde as a response thank you after that fight with sasuke team and the long run here i'm a little low on energy i'm sure kanoha has already sent hunting after me when he said that, Naruto left his mindscape and woke up in the real world. Jiraiya smiled and told Naruto, I'm not here to kill you, I'm here to bring you back. Before Naruto could answer, the four Jonin who had been following Jiraiya attacked, jumping from their branches with the clear intent to kill. As soon as the four Jonin got close enough to attack, the two on the right side of the blonde stiffened up and fell to the ground, while the other two jumped away quickly when they landed on separate branches the two shinobi looked at their fallen friends and were shocked to see two kunai in each of their heads it was clear that an angry jiraiya had thrown the kunai at them what the hell is going on you're attacking a fellow shinobi from kanoha stop or i'll think this is treason jiraiya growled and narrowed his eyes in anger as he got two more kunai in his hands we can't let jiraiya sama the demon scum come back to the village he must be killed one of the jonin shouted back you heard him at the gate he gave up his loyalty to Kanoha, which means he is no longer a Kanoha Nin. If you keep getting in the way, we will have to put you in jail for treason. Jiraiya blinked, Naruto blinked, both of them laughed out loud, shut up, what's so funny? The two Jonin yelled in anger, not wanting to be made fun of at all, why you arrest me? Oh, Kami. I really needed that laugh Jiraiya laughed so hard that his eyes watered, in a flash, the Toad Sanin moved from where he was to. Behind the two Jonin, with his two kunai stuck deep into their hearts, both Jonin fell to the ground lifeless, but their killer didn't care, he just cleaned his blades and put them away, then turned to his young apprentice and smiled widely, alright, you overconfident fools aside, Naruto, I'm here to take you back to the village, I'm not going back, Erosinen, Naruto said as he used the QB's power to make his eyes bleed red, I hate it there, and everyone hates me except for you, Tsunade. Bachan and the Ikirakus, do you think they didn't cheer after I left? No, I'm not going back there, and if I ever go back, it will be to burn that village to the ground. If you leave now, people will call you a missing Nin, Jiraiya said, hoping that his apprentice would see sense. The Akatsuki is still after you, Naruto. You'll be much safer in Kanoha. Naruto turned his back on his sensei and said, it doesn't matter. I bet they've already marked me as a missing Nin, and I'd probably be safer. 
With Akatsuki then in Kanoha, you know that's not true, Naruto, because Tsunade wouldn't let them do that. Jiraiya replied with a frown when he saw that the young team was no longer listening to him. I can't let you leave Naruto. You have to go back. Even if I have to force you, it's for your own safety. He didn't want to make Naruto come back, but Jiraiya knew he had no choice. He couldn't let his apprentice leave like this. It wasn't safe. A new shinobi like Naruto wouldn't last long if both. The Hunanin and the Akatsuki were after him. The only question was which group would get to him first. So, this is how it's going to be, huh, sensei? Naruto asked, dropping his shoulder in defeat. I'm sorry, Naruto, but it's for your own good, Jiraiya said. I'm glad the blonde has finally come to her senses, caught off guard by the sudden move by his apprentice. Jiraiya was unable to stop Naruto from drawing on the small reserve of chakra provided by the fox and casting his signature. Jetsu Shadow Clone Jetsu, Jiraiya was caught off guard by Naruto's sudden move, and he couldn't stop him from using the small amount of chakra the fox gave him to cast his signature Jetsu, Shadow Clone Jetsu, Naruto hid in the smoke of the coming clones and started running as fast as he could to get as far away from his scary sensei as he could, as the smoke cleared, Jiraiya could only stare in shock at the scene in front of him, which was a sea of orange that went on forever, he knew Naruto could make a lot of clones, but this was just too many, there had to be more than 2,000 of them, maybe even 3,000, and they were all going in different directions, only one of Naruto's clones stayed. Behind, its job was to take Naruto's last message to his sensei, I'll be back eventually to make the villagers pay, sensei, I can only hope that you'll take Tsunade Bachan and the Ikirakus and leave the villagers to their fate. After giving its message, the clone turned around and ran off to find its brothers. Jiraiya could only sigh and head back to the village. There was no way he could find the real Naruto before the team crossed one of the borders, so there was no point in trying to hug that. Gaki sure knows how to make trouble for other people. Tsunade is going to kill me for this hospital. As Sasuke came back to the land of the conscious, he saw that he was lying on a hospital bed. He thought it was a hospital because the ceiling and walls were white. He also saw that his hands and feet were tied to the bed. Sasuke Kuen, you're awake. A voice next to him said in an annoyingly high pitch. When Sasuke looked to his right and saw Sakura sitting on a chair next to him, he sighed and said, so, the doe beat me, eh, well, this isn't over, I'll make sure Baka is put to death for having the nerve to touch a Uchiha, Sakura, what went wrong, the last thing I remember is being attacked by the doe after agreeing to go back to Kanoha, Sasuke said weakly, putting on a mask of innocence, Grr, that Naruto, I knew that Baka couldn't beat you without cheating on Sasuke Kuen, Sakura growled, and it was easy for him to trick her, don't worry about the doe anymore, Sasuke Kuen, we got rid of, that demon, after seeing what he did to you, damn it, he can't be put to death because he ran away. How am I going to get to Manjiki now? Sasuke swore, and his eyes grew narrow with anger. No matter what, I can get away and get to Orochimaru as long as the dobe isn't here to stop me. How do we get out of this place? I'm going to have to pay for this, so it better be worth it. When Sasuke looked at Sakura, he put on his most charming smile. That's good, Sakura, thank you for looking after me. Now that Baka is gone, I can finally be with you without him getting in the way. Oh, Sasuke Kuen, I knew you loved me, Sakura said with a sigh and a bright red blush. I'm going to kill that Baka Naruto when I see him because he's standing in the way of true love. Sasuke lightly shook his restraints and frowned, trying to hide his disgust. Dearest Sakura, would you please take off these straps so I can hug you? Eep, Sakura squealed, and her blush got darker. Of course I can, Sasuke Kuen, I'll do anything for you as soon as he was free sasuke disappeared and came back behind sakura he gave her a simple chop to the neck which knocked her out stupid girl as if uchiha would ever be linked to such a weakling since you freed me i'll let you live this one time after saying that he jumped out the window ran as fast as he could to the nearest wall and then ran into the forest straight toward odogeku hokage's office tsunade sat at her desk with her hands tight around her sick bottle waiting for jiraiya to come back with naruto Please come back safely, Naruto. I'm sure we can make the village see you as the hero you are. They just need more time. Jiraiya came in alone through the window and broke up her thoughts. Where is Naruto? Did he go home or to the hospital? Where is that skank? I'm sorry, Tsunade Haim, but he got away from me and I couldn't bring him back. Jiraiya replied in a serious way. Ready to run away at the first sign of a punch being thrown, what? Jiraiya really thought he was going to die when Tsunade screamed, You're a fucking Sanin, how did a beaten up and exhausted Jenin get away from you? Jiraiya answered, but he was shaking like a leaf in the wind, he didn't know it at the time, but his answer was one of the few correct ones, and it kept him from being thrown out of the village. I tried to bring him back, but four Jonin who had followed me from the village attacked us. That didn't help much, and when I went to grab him, he made more shadow clones than anyone should be able to do and ran away. 
After taking a few deep breaths to calm down, Tsunade looked up at him with fiery eyes. And who was the Jonin that attacked him? I shot and killed him. Good. I guess we can only hope he comes back on his own. At least today can't get any worse. Tsunade said with a sigh as she sat down. At that very moment, a Chunin ran into the office, Hokage-sama. Sasuke Echiha has escaped from the hospital. Great. Fucking great. How did he get out? Of the chains, she muttered, already knowing how the Uchiha have got away. It looks like Karuno Sakura freed him, the Chunin said, trembling under the angry gaze of his Okage. Of course he was. Send out as many search teams as you can to find him. Tsunade replied that she could tell the ANBU agents in the office were leaving to find the Uchiha. Oh, and bring Karuno Sakura to Ibiki. Maybe he can find out why she felt the need to let out a known traitor so soon after he was caught. Hi, Okage-sama said the Chunin as he ran off to do his job. Tsunade sighed again and leaned back in a chair. She took out a full bottle of sake and two cups. Take a seat and tell me what happened to Naruto. Jiraiya flopped down in one of the other chairs in the room, but before he could start telling his story, the office doors were thrown open and Danzo and his minions, also known as the Okage's advisors Hamura Mitokado and Kohari Yudatain, walked in the grate. What do you three want? Tsunade yelled at this. Point having no more patience, of course, Danzo was the one to answer. We are only here to tell you what the council has decided about the traitor Hokage-sama's rank and bounty. Oh, is that true? And what kind of mark has the Uchiha been given? Tsunade asked with a single eyebrow raised. You misunderstood, Hokage-sama. We meant Naruto Uzumaki, the traitor, Koharu said, looking at Danzo as she spoke. What? Both Jiraiya and Tsunade yelled and jumped to their feet. Naruto is not a traitor, the Uchiha are the ones who should be in the bingo book. Jiraiya growled and clenched her fingers open and shed in anger. The boy left the village without permission, so he is a missing name and will be treated like one. Uchiha Sasuke, on the other hand, was just misled by the cursed seal and should be brought back. We can't lose the Sharingan, Danzo said. Jiraiya smiled because he remembered something from a fight he had in the past, which made Danzo angry. Uzumaki Naruto quit being a shinobi before he left. The village, since he was no longer a Kanoa Nin, we can't put him in the bingo book. Tsunade smiled when she heard this, but their hopes were quickly dashed when Danzo smiled and gave them a signed form. By law, he is still working for Kanoa because he hasn't turned in his retirement papers yet. So, Uzumaki Naruto is officially a missing Nin, Amira said, making both San Nin frown deeply. The Kanoa Council has decided that Uzumaki Naruto is an A-class criminal and has put a bounty of 90 million. Ryo on his head, Uchiha Sasuke will be a C-class missing name with a reward of 120 million Ryo and a capture-only order. That is all. Good day Hokage-sama. The three then turn and leave, having reached their goals. As soon as the three elders left, Tsunade sat back down and crushed the sake bottle in her hand out of anger. Time skipped the next day. Naruto woke up in the morning to the sounds of birds, which was strange because his alarm clock usually woke him up with a loud beep after taking a few. Seconds to figure out where he was, the blonde teen jumped up and got ready to go. He was in a cave near the border between fire country and river country. He was able to find this cave before he passed out from lack of chakra. Well, I'm finally out of Kanoa, and it feels great not to have to worry about what people think of me or try to win their approval. Naruto walked through the forest slowly and thought as he went, Where do I go from here? I can't go to Suna because they're friends with Kanoa. And I can't go to Wave because that's where they'd look for me first. He was thinking about something when he heard a noise in the bushes. In an instant, his kunai was in his hand, but Naruto was relieved to see that it was just a squirrel. The blonde put his weapon back in his pouch and started walking again, thinking his heart was still beating fast in his chest. I need to go somewhere they would never think to check. Somewhere I can hide to avoid Akatsuki and Hunter Nin, and somewhere. I can do research on what I want from the QB. The blonde frowned and tried to think of something. Hmm, wait, I've got it. That is the last place anyone would think to look for me. Naruto jumped into the trees with a sly grin on his face and set off in the direction he wanted to go. Time skip 10 months later. Naruto's last 10 months had been pretty good. He avoided both the Akatsuki and the Huntanin by doing the one thing no one would expect him to do. He stayed out of sight and pretended to be a normal person after easily. Beating a group of bandits for money, he used a transformation and paid his way into Karang, the capital city of Fire Country and home of the Fire Lord. As soon as he got to the city, he changed his look the old-fashioned way. By putting on makeup and dyeing his hair, his spiky, blonde hair had been dyed a dark red color, his eyes had been covered with black contact lenses, and his whisker marks had been covered with makeup. When he put on civilian clothes, he was completely unrecognizable once. 
His disguise was ready. Naruto started looking for a job and a place to live, which were his last two tasks. He first chose to live in Kurang because he had heard that it had the largest library of all the elemental counties. It was said to have information on almost everything known to humans, as well as books from before the Great Demon Wars. Naruto got a job at the National Library with the help of some lies and a simple genjutsu that the QB taught him. He was also able to rent the attic so he could work as a security guard at night. It was the best thing he could have asked for. From then on, he spent his days working and reading as much as he could. At night, he slept while an army of shadow clones read as much as they could. Naruto couldn't help but grimace when he thought about how he'd learned about the shadow clones memory transfer flashback. He had just arrived at a cave on the border of fire country and river country. After running away from Jiraiya, he was tired, sore, and very tired. This cave was a sight for sore eyes. He decided to spend the night here, so he sent a thought to his clones to get rid of themselves. As soon as they were all gone, he passed out from the pain. His brain was throbbing from the thousands of memories flooding in. When he woke up the next morning, QB had spent the whole night telling him how stupid he was. He was able to survive the information overload from the scattered clones because of this demon. He still had a painful headache for days, but he was excited about his new way to train. End of flashback, Naruto's only ninja activity was studying with clones at night. He didn't want to risk being found out, no matter how unlikely it was, so he tried to look like a normal teen from the outside. It took him more than six months to read all of the interesting books in the library. There were still thousands of books he hadn't even touched yet, but he had already read everything that interested him, even with the help of his clones. He had too many books to read and too much information to remember, but no matter what, he was now one of the smartest people in the country. He read about everything that interested him, which was a wide range of things, whether it was true or not. He read it. Naruto's favorite thing to do was read. The Sande Mokage gave him his first book when he was five years old, and ever since then, he loved to read any book he could get his hands on, which wasn't that many because he wasn't allowed in the library. However, now that he had one of the best libraries at his disposal, he read all the books he could and learned as much as he could. He was reading some old texts that had been kept for a long time when he came across something called manga. These were old comics that told stories made up by authors who were long dead. These were the most interesting and fun for him because many of these manga gave him different requests to make with his nine wises with what he had. Learned from the QB, he could become one of the most powerful ninjas ever. Flashback, even though his body was asleep, Naruto was still awake in his mindscape. He was going through some of the mangas he had memorized and deciding what he wanted from the QB. At this point, the demon looked over at what his host was reading and saw something interesting. That's interesting. I wonder how you humans were able to keep track of everything in the multiverse, the multiple what? Naruto asked. Confused, because he didn't know the word, the multiverse is a place with an infinite number of portals that each lead to a different world and dimension. The books you are reading seem to be about what goes on in a few of these realms. Really, that's actually pretty interesting. QB, is there a way I could get to these other realms? I guess you could if you were accompanied by an elder god or a certified dimensional traveler. If you didn't have an escort or permission, you would be punished. For breaking one of the Elder God's rules, if you want, I can show you around some of these realms after I ascend, but only three or four because I'll need to sleep to get my energy back. Yes, I think I would like that. These books have some skills I want, and getting them from the source would be best. After that, he went back to his book and made plans for the future. End of flashback time skip three years later, it was time. And all over the elemental countries, Biju were getting in touch with. Their hosts to tell them what was coming up and why they would be getting a new tale. Naruto had made his way back to the cave on the border. He had quit his job five days before and spent the last four days traveling to this cave. It took him a long time because he had to travel at civilian speeds to avoid being caught, even though this was a long and boring trip. QB had told him that the unsealing they were planning would be very dangerous and would probably draw a lot of attention. This is... While they were so far from the nearest village, inside his mindscape, Naruto was amazed to see the QB twitch in pain and hear its howls echo off the walls of the sewer. The last hour had been spent watching and listening to the beast scream in pain. It seemed that growing a new tale of power was a painful and long process, but it was worth it. He could easily feel how much power was coming off the beast. He had thought the QB was strong before, but now it was like comparing a new gen in two. Akage, the difference in strength was huge. Who would have thought that one tale of power could give so much? After a few painful minutes, the newly crowned Jubi finally calmed down and let out a sigh of relief. Congratulations on your rise, Jubi-sama, the blonde said with a big smile. Okay, so do you want to be set free now? Indeed, we should hurry up, because the sooner I'm free, the better, Jubi replied by giving him a smile back. If you want me to have control over your body and chakra, you have to rip off half of the seal. Once I've done my part, 
You'll rip off the other half and set me free. Okay, that sounds easy enough. Naruto nodded, walked up to the big cage, and tore off half of the paper tag with the Shinigami seal on it. Okay, tell me your nine requests. Be specific and make them count, because once they are done, you can't take them back. As Naruto looked up at the fox, his smile grew, Naruto said. First of all, I have a question, with his face scrunched up in. Thought, oh, is that right? What do you want to know? Asked the fox. When we talked about the multiverse earlier, you brought up some rules that the gods made. Naruto cocked his head to the side and started. Jubi replied with a nod, since he already knew what his host was going to ask. Indeed, what about the divine proclamations of the elder gods? I was wondering what they were. Because I want to know if any of them will get in the way of my requests, the blonde said, confirming what the demon had thought, hmm, the elder gods have made a lot of rules, but from what I can tell from what you're thinking, only three of them would affect your request. Naruto could only frown at that and feel a little annoyed that he hadn't asked sooner. That's what I was afraid of. What are they? I hope they don't mess up too many of my plans, Jubi said. No, they shouldn't, and the blonde let out a sigh of relief. The first thing I should say is that no one who was born mortal can become truly immortal, huh? Naruto opened his mouth in shock. What do you mean by the phrase true immortality? Jubi moved around in his cage and got ready to give a long explanation. It's all kind of confusing, but I'll try to explain. There are false immortals and true immortals. False immortals are those who live a long time but can still be killed. They may live for many millennia or be able to heal any injury, but they can still be killed if someone figures out how Jubi stopped there to let the blonde think about. What had been said before going on, on the other hand, a true immortal, like a god or a bigger demon, will never die. Even if our bodies are completely destroyed and our souls are torn to pieces, we will always survive and rebuild, even if it takes a long time. Huh, that's interesting, if not a little bit confusing, Naruto muttered as he thought about what he had learned. I'm a little annoyed that I might die someday, but I don't think that law will get in the way of my plans. What's the next? 1. The next rule is that no one can take away someone else's freedom of choice this is one reason why we biju can't just force our containers to let us out okay but that one might mess up one of the skills i wanted naruto got angry and tried to think of ways to get around this rule not as much as you might think because there is a way out of that law jubi answered with a knowing grin oh what's that naruto asked his eyes shining with excitement it's one of the reasons you humans can still use jinjutsu without getting in trouble the loophole is that as long as the mind control can be stopped in any way it's okay Juby replied, all you have to do is change your ability so that it can be fought off if the target has the willpower to do so. Hmm, I guess that could work. I wouldn't want it to be too easy, would I? Better make them think they can beat me if they do. Naruto answered while he and Juby both smiled evilly. Now, the last decree has to do with the multiverse. With the power I'll have left after this, I can take you to a few of the many dimensions, but there are some rules to keep mortals from playing God. One of these rules says that no being can have a permanent effect on any dimension without permission from that dimension's patron God, so that means I can't do anything in these dimensions. Then, you're wasting your time. No, that's not it at all. You need to look under the bottom, as that silver-haired rat would say. The decree means you can do whatever you want. You can kill everyone, blow up planets, or do anything else you want. It just means that whatever you do won't last long, Juby replied, his eyes filling with memories. Usually, everything would wear off after a few days or as soon as you left the dimension. Okay, that makes it much easier. But what's to stop me from just destroying a place over and over again, except for the god you would piss off? The fox asked in a sarcastic tone. All right, I'll be good then. Naruto scratched the back of his head sheepishly as he replied, Do you have any more questions, brat? Juby asked giving his host a roll of the eyes. No, I guess we can get started. Okay, tell me what you want first, but be clear, right? I guess I'll start with some false immortality. I want a very advanced healing factor that makes me immune to all diseases, viruses, and poisons and slows down my aging as much as possible. The blonde answered, his face scrunching up again as if he was thinking hard. I also wanted to heal all wounds as quickly as possible and grow back. Any lost body parts, including the head, brain, and other vital organs. When she paused again, the blonde's eyes got cloudy as she thought, then they got bigger. Oh, he added, on second thought, summoning is a big part of ninja arts, and I don't want to miss out on it just because my cuts heal too fast. Finally, it should be able to completely rebuild my body as long as one cell is still alive. HM, I think that's it. Anything else, damn, you really put a lot of thought into that one, I know I told you to be specific but damn just damn hey naruto laughed sheepishly and said i've had a whole year to think about these things i needed to make sure i had everything covered well congrats luckily this doesn't break any laws i'll just have to rewrite a little bit of your dna 
It shouldn't take long, but I should warn you that it will hurt a lot. Before the blonde could answer, one of Juby's tails started to glow bright green. It looked like the medical chakra he had seen so not at use. But it was stronger. The aura flowed up the demon's tail and formed a ball the size of Naruto's head. The ball slowly floated away from the tail, through the bars, and into the blonde's chest. At first, it seemed like nothing was happening. Seconds passed, and just as he was about to talk to the demon, he fell to his knees in pain and screamed as loud as he could. Then, everything went dark elsewhere, all across the elemental nations. All sensor type shinobi felt a flare of highly potent chakra. Before it disappeared moments later, most chose to ignore it, but the ones that tried to trace it back to the source found that it seemed to dissipate into thin air. With Naruto, don't worry about the other universes, it's just to make Naruto up, so don't worry. As soon as Naruto woke up, he could feel a small change in his body. All of the aches and pains he had felt during his daily life seemed to have gone away. When he got to his feet, he hopped around and was glad to see that the small but annoying pain he usually felt in his back and knees was gone. In fact, nothing hurt at all, taking out a kunai. He decided to test his new ability to heal by cutting himself across the arm several times. To his amazement and delight, the small cuts he made were all healed before he was done making them. Even the long gash he cut deep into his arm seemed to heal before the kunai had left the skin. It was really amazing. Naruto wanted to see how good he was, so he strengthened the kunai with his chakra and quickly cut off his left arm at the elbow. He was amazed to see the whole arm grow back in just a few seconds. He put everything in one word and smiled as big as he could. Cool, yes, I know, and I do great work, Juby said in a smug tone. Can we get out of here? I need this to be done today. Sorry, I got sidetracked, but you have to agree that this is pretty cool. Naruto chuckled. Naruto sat down again and went back to his mindscape. In the blink of an eye, he was back in front of Juby's cage yeah let's hurry up and get this done what's your second request naruto gave a big grin and thought about what he would do with his next power oh this one is going to be great i call it absolute shape shifting i want to be able to change the shape and composition of all objects whether they are living or not as he talked his smile got bigger and bigger until it looked like it was going to split his face uh i can't do that one all the way gods are the only ones who can fully control matter when juby said something naruto's smile fell but i can let you change your shape in any way you want as long as you stay within the limits of your general size i can also let you shape and change inanimate things however you want i think this is called alchemy in many dimensions but there are a lot of different rules about it it's not exactly what i wanted but it's close enough so i guess you can go ahead naruto moaned and frowned in frustration as a purple aura Surrounded one of Juby's many tails, Naruto noticed that the tail from before seemed to have lost its color, as if it had been drained of all color. The others were red like a fox's fur, but the tail had turned a light gray color. He thought that was what happened when their power was taken away. Before he could ask, the purple aura had already turned into a blob that seemed to change shape every few seconds. The blob flew at Naruto much faster than the sphere had, as soon as the blob touched. His chest, it seemed to grow and cover his whole body. It kept growing until he was completely hidden. Once he was completely covered, the aura started to sink into his skin, and he could feel the changes starting. This one wasn't as painful as the last one, though, so he was able to stay in the realm of the conscious. He writhed around in pain for several minutes, groaning and moaning as his whole body seemed to burn and a strong heat spread out from the center of his body as quickly as it had. Come, the pain went away and Naruto gasped as he jumped to his feet. Pain-free, Naruto looked down at his newly grown hand and made a change by putting all of his attention on what he wanted to happen. His hand turned almost instantly into a 10-inch long steel blade with a serrated edge and a point. Naruto couldn't help but laugh at that because this skill would be very useful. I like this. He said with a chuckle as his body continued to change into different people and things. He saw that he couldn't get more than five inches taller or shorter than his current height but he could change his weight by getting more or less dense yes that's right can we move on now when naruto got back to his job he started with his third request this next one is pretty easy i want to be able to take part of my enemy's strength and abilities and add them to my own juby took a moment to think and scratched its chin hmm i can do that but i'll have to split it up if you want physical changes You'll have to absorb part of their physical body. If you want powers and abilities, you'll have to absorb their spiritual energy. After a while, the demon answered, and its tail swung lazily behind it. Okay, that's fine with me. Can you also give me their memories? Before the demon could answer, Naruto asked quickly, it would be easier for them to use their skills, and I have an idea about how it would help. Okay, but since memories can be both physical and spiritual, you would have to take in 
both to get the memories. After he says this, a bluish green aura wraps around one of his tails and starts to gather at the end, just like the last two times. The aura took the shape of a swirling vortex and started to move toward the blonde. It moved slowly through the air and closed the distance between them. As it got closer, Naruto could feel a strange pull trying to pull him into the vortex. Before he knew it, the vortex had entered his body and set fire to his palms. He felt pain as the skin on his hands began to twist. When he looked down, he saw that he was right. Each of his palms now had a spiraling green vortex about the size of a small marble carved into it. You can use those vortices too. Take in both energy and physical things, just tell them to start working, and they'll start sucking in what you want. Juby's voice cut through his thoughts. They can only hold a certain amount of energy at once, and they can't absorb things bigger than they are. So be careful, if they take in too much, they'll shut down for a while. Sweet, Naruto clapped his hands and looked down at them. He tried turning the vortices on and off. When he did, he saw that they only made a weak suction, which meant he couldn't use them from far away. He would have to be close to or touch his target to use them. Okay, let's move on to the fourth request. Naruto chirped as his vortices turned on and off over and over again. His hands flashed green. I want to be in charge of everything, he said. No, that would be getting into the god's business again. Jubi stated, damn it. Naruto swore when he had asked about the decrees. Why hadn't the demon told him this? It would have saved a lot of time. I can give. You limited control over one element, replied Jubi, limited in that you can control what it does, but you can't make it out of nothing. That's not counting what you can do with chakra, but elemental jutsu are a much weaker form of full manipulation. This made Naruto sigh. He would have liked to have more control over the elements, especially since he didn't know any elemental jutsu, which is a big part of a shinobi's life. That's okay. I guess it's better than nothing, he answered after taking a moment to think about which part he wanted give me control over electricity and that includes both static electricity and full bolts of lightning oh can i ask why you chose that element in particular i would have thought you would choose fire since you love explosions jubi laughed to himself and asked naruto replied with a grin on his face well i have a lot of reasons but the main one is that i want to see what that jerk sasuke will look like when his chidori turns against him that made the demon laugh and its smile matched the smile of its host. Oh, yes, that would be pretty funny. So, it's electricity then. Then, one of the demon's tails started to glow bright yellow, and the light flowed to the end to make a lightning bolt, faster than he could follow. The bolt streaked across the mindscape and struck Naruto in the chest, causing his to stumble back a step. He didn't feel any pain this time, which was strange, but he could hear what sounded like locks clicking together. In his head, a sudden flash of light happened nearby, which made him stop and turn around. As Naruto looked around, he saw that his mindscape had changed. There seemed to be a few new pipes here and there. Before, there were only blue and red pipes, which showed that he and the demons had different chakra systems. Now, there are yellow pipes all along the walls. I think you should only use this skill outside of your mindscape. I don't know what kind of damage you could do to your nerves if you used it here yes i see naruto answered with a smile as small arcs of lightning danced over his fingers okay so what's your fifth wish i want to make a new calling contract for this one mm, i guess you can't use those weak little frogs in public anymore can you i can't really make a new contract but i can give you an ability like the renegans which will let you use your chakra to make any creature you want juby replied and tried to explain as simply as possible think of it as a mix between a normal summoning and one of your shadow clones, your chakra makes up the body, and a part of your soul gives it consciousness. Wow, that's really cool. Naruto cheered and jumped up and down with joy. I just thought you'd make a contract for foxes or ask another summon boss for permission, but this is war, so it's better. Yeah, I'm awesome in that way. Juby laughed with his teeth showing, with a flick of its glowing tail. The demon sent a cloud of silver-gray energy toward the blonde which slowly seeped into his chest. Like the last time, there was no pain, just a flash of light that made him temporarily lose his sight. When Naruto's vision cleared, he turned around and saw that his mindscape had changed again. This time, animals were drawn on the walls, ceiling, and floor. The blonde laughed and said, Ha, huh, I like the new decor. It gives the place a wild look. He didn't pay any more attention to the walls because he could test his new ability once he was out of his mindscape. Yes, quite. Let's move on to your sixth request, okay? I got this next one from one of those mangas I read, the one about vampires. Naruto started by thinking about what he should do next. What really got my attention were the seals on the main character's gloves. They were called the Cromwell Initiative, and they limited his power. If I keep using my ability to absorb, I'll get stronger and stronger until I'm too strong to enjoy a good fight. What I want are some seals to limit my power, yeah. That's a good idea. If it's too easy, it won't be fun, will it? 
Juby laughed, and it looked like he was thinking about something from the past. I'll make it a three-tiered seal that will lock up 90% of your power. One of the remaining tails got a blood-red aura that glowed with power as it flowed up his tail and turned into a big gooey ball. The ball soon flew across the void and into his chest. Naruto felt a tingle on his hands, which made him look down. He grinned when he saw two blood-red symbols on the back of each hand they were the kanji for seal tattooed right onto the skin as soon as naruto saw them he could feel a part of his chakra being cut off from him he could feel it there but no matter how hard he tried he couldn't seem to get a hold of the closed off parts at the same time he knew he could break the seals if he needed to with the information on the release phrase flowing into his mind the blonde smiled and flexed his fingers as he said perfect okay tell me about request number seven for this one i want my chakra to be split back into its spiritual and physical halves naruto asked while looking at the pipes that stood for the chakra i still want to be able to combine them into chakra but i also want to be able to use both ryoku and ki i think that's what they're called in the manga okay this one should be easy enough she said juby answered by raising one of his few bright tails a white and blue aura started to move around the tail it flowed off the tail and turned into a blue and white yin yang symbol that flew over naruto and into him as soon as it went into him he could feel his mindscape changing again and he managed to close his eyes just as everything went away in a bright flash when naruto opened his eyes he saw that the red yellow and blue pipes on the walls had been replaced by three pools of water in different colors on the floor on his left was a pool of clear water that gave off a white glow on his right was a pool of blue water and in front of him was a pool of blood red water it was clear that these pools represented his different sources of energy when he looked down he saw a pipe with light blue water running from both pools up into the ceiling that must be his chakra which means that the big ball of yellow lightning above him showed that he had power over electricity man it's starting to look less and less like a sewer and more and more like a nice place naruto laughed and looked around the small room again while he did so yes that's better but i can't be here to enjoy the new decor juby laughed along with him two more to go brat i hope you made them good of course i did since i want to have kids someday and i know these other skills won't be passed on naruto said grinning wider as he spoke i want the next one to be a dojitsu which is a bloodline juby's eyes rolled in a funny way as it laughed at that well that's easy since i made that stupid Sharingan, compared to your last six requests, this one will be a piece of cake. What do you want this bloodline to look like and do? I want it to be active from the start, because that will make it much better than the Sharingan, Naruto said with a sly smile. As for how it looks, it should make the eyes black and have a big diamond in the middle. It should also have three stages that can be moved through by adding more chakra. He stopped for a moment, and during that time, his mind was full of different ideas the first stage should let it see how chakras flow and how they are linked for this stage the diamond should be white after a moment naruto went on his eyes shining with happiness the second shinobi moved quickly out of the way of the blast debris and took cover behind whatever they could find trees and rocks were thrown into the air with a loud crash breaking everything in their path the teams of shinobi stayed in place by sending chakra through their feet to stay still and avoid what pieces of the destruction they could when things calmed down they went back to where they had been and were shocked by what they saw a few feet away from where they were standing what used to be a patch of forest that led to a well-hidden cave had been turned into a 50 meter wide 10 meter deep crater in the middle of that crater was a column of red evil chakra that rose high into the sky and grew stronger every second they sneaked up to the edge of the crater and found uzumaki naruto who was the source of the malevolent power his appearance had changed a lot which was surprising but they still knew this kind of demonic chakra kiba chose to be the first to talk what the hell is he doing no one knew the answer but jiraiya made a guess i believe the kyubi is running away sakura turned to him with a confused look on her face that makes no sense since naruto is the kyubi gara quickly threw the pinket into a tree and used a sand claw to hold her there stupid girl just because we hold demons doesn't mean we are demons ourselves gara growled but his face was blank and his eyes were narrowed with anger he gave her one last look and then turned to jiraiya you are wrong too jiraiya sama naruto hasn't been holding the kyubi for a long time everyone was interested in this what do you mean sharingan's eyes grew narrow as itachi asked something was wrong with shikaku this morning when i went into the seal to see what was wrong i saw that he had grown an extra tail gara explained which made a few people in the crowd gasp how did he get a second tail jiraiya asked with wide open eyes that shouldn't even be possible i'm not sure exactly how Gara answered with a blank, emotionless face. As you know, 
He and I don't get along very well, but from what I could gather from his ramblings, all the biju should have gained another tale, which means Naruto is now the keeper of the jubi. Before anyone else could answer, a loud scream came from inside the crater, letting them know why they were all there in the first place. Naruto fell to his knees, threw his head back, and screamed at the top of his lungs. Crimson chakra blew around him in a crazy way. As quickly as it had started, the scream stopped, probably because the person who was screaming had just blown up. The three teens looked into the crater with shock and disgust. They had no idea that the teen inside had died violently, and his blood and guts covered the ground for meters around, even though they were surprised by the teen's death. The two Akatsuki members were more worried about the pillar of crimson chakra that was still in the crater. It was a pillar of evil demonic chakra that seemed to be taking some kind of shape, which was not a good sign. For a few seconds, the chakra swirled around, quickly collapsing and compressing itself into a more human-like shape. Then, in a blinding flash of white light, the chakra disappeared, and a man stood in the crater. The man, who looked to be in his early twenties, stood tall and proud in the crater, with his head held high and a smug smile on his face. He was about six feet tall, had black hair to his waist, a short black beard, and bright crimson eyes. He had a pair of red fox ears with black tips on top of his head, which, along with his longer than usual canine teeth and sharpened claws, made him look wild and feral with a hint of nobility. Even though it looked like the man was made of air and chakra, he was fully dressed in a stylish, if not practical, outfit. His outfit consisted of a simple black shirt made of what looked like a very expensive silk-like material, a pair of tight-fitting black pants, and a long, red overcoat to protect his feet. He wore a pair of wooden getta, last but not least, he had ten furry tails that flowed behind him and moved in their own pattern. This was not the least noticeable part of his appearance. Each tail was several feet long and dark red with a few inches of black at the tips. There was no doubt who this man was. The man turned his head to see what was going on around him. He took a deep breath of fresh air and yelled, freedom. His voice was deep and strange, like it came from something much bigger than the man in front of them. At last, Kankaro took the form of the newly freed demon fox and said in two words what was going on, oh shit, almost right away. The demon's head snapped to where they were, and its red eyes lit up with amusement and joy as it saw how scared they were. Well, 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 what is this? What about me? As Juby spoke, he hummed and his wide smile slowly spread across his face. This made the weaker people in the group whimper i wonder if naruto would be too upset if i killed some of his prey maybe i should just wait and ask him even though jiraiya is scared right now he was able to hear what was said because his mind was working as fast as it could what do you mean we just saw naruto blow up so he's dead well he probably did blow up didn't he the demon answered and his smile got just a little bit wider oh well you know how he is nothing seems to stop him for long at this time tsunade came in with several ANBU squads behind her, she didn't pay much attention to most of the shinobi who had gathered. Instead, she quickly looked around and locked eyes with Jiraiya. What's going on? She asked. For a moment, she looked at the stranger in the crater. We felt a huge release of Kyuubi's chakra, but where's Naruto? The Toad Sage was at a loss for words and didn't want to tell his moody teammate what had happened to her surrogate brother, son, or whatever you want to call him. He was lucky that Kiba, of all people, came to help him. Uh, he's here there and everywhere else a few of his fellow jinnin yelled kiba what too soon shikamaru sighed and tried to avoid looking into sanade's eyes as she turned to face them nara and inazuka were lucky that the jubi chose to show up at this time i wonder where that boy is jubi muttered to himself but his voice was just loud enough for those at the edge of the crater to hear it shouldn't be taking him this long but he just lost the whole source of energy hmm hopefully it will go back to normal speed once he gets used to not having my chakra the demon stopped there for a few seconds with his eyes narrowed in thought then he gave a big grin and turned his head to the side ah uh, you're there when the other shinobi looked where he was looking they saw that he was looking at what seemed to be a simple piece of fleshy meat that was moving on its own before their eyes the meat started to shake then get bigger as it slowly rose into the air and then it started to change it started with the bones quickly forming around the slab of meat which was a miracle in itself then came the organs veins arteries chakra coils muscles and so much more they could only watch in shocked silence as this went on eyes wide as what used to be a small chunk of meat slowly regenerated into an unharmed uzumaki naruto complete with blonde hair and sparkling blue eyes grinning widely naruto took a long look around him taking in the 
huge crater in the human-like shape of the juby next to him when he heard a sharp intake of breath he turned his eyes to one end of the crater and smirked as he saw how shocked the other shinobi were before he could say anything though naruto shivered as a gust of wind blew over his body which was naked with wide eyes and a lot of shame he quickly made a picture in his mind and told his body to change he breathed a sigh of relief when he felt the changes start naruto's skin seemed to ripple and move in strange ways to those who were watching and then he just changed he had grown a whole foot and was now the same height as his friend with dark hair he towered over many of his classmates his hair had grown longer and was now all the way down to his shoulders but it still looked wild and spiky now that his whiskers were gone his face was smooth and free of marks lastly he was now dressed like the demon next to him but the colors were backwards his shirt and pants were dark red while his overcoat was black as night a pair of wooden get it tied the outfit together and made him even taller most shinobi would just use transformation to hide their bodies but naruto had actually changed his skin into the clothes he was wearing in the split second it took to make the clothes a new layer of skin grew naruto looked over at his demon companion and gave a small nod telling jubi to open a doorway to the other worlds before any of the shinobi could do anything jubi easily tore a hole in reality and stepped through it a moment later the younger blonde followed him naruto who was standing outside of reality looked back at the shinobi who were quickly making their way to the portal when he did they stopped short because they felt a wave of killer intent unlike anything they had ever felt before except when they fought the qb i'll come back one day and when i do the leaf will be on fire when naruto spoke his eyes were only on the kanoa shinobi the pure hatred and anger in those eyes made them shiver when he was done the killer intent went away and the blonde turned away, slowly walking into the depths of the multiverse as the portal closed behind him. As soon as the portal closed, Naruto fell to the ground and lost consciousness as the world around him went dark. When he heard a thud, Jubi looked over his shoulder and laughed as he saw that his friend was out cold. PSH. I was wondering how long it would take for you to lose consciousness, regenerating. My whole body after losing all of my chakra must have been very tiring. Juby laughed and walked toward the blonde with a smile. The demon god lifted the blonde onto his shoulders and carried on into the darkness of the portal. Damn the Gaki, he's always getting in my way. This must be the thousandth time I've saved his sorry hide. The group of ninjas just stood there in shock at what had just happened. Gara was the first to do something. Timari, Kenkuro, Baki come, we're done here, he told them. As he jumped into the trees, before turning to follow their Kage, the three gave the crater one last look. Come, Kisame, we need to tell Leader Sama what we found. Itachi murmured and turned to leave. Are you sure, Itachi? Kisame asked. Following his partner's lead, this is going to really piss him off. Yes, I guess it will, but there's nothing we can do because we can't reach the vessel anymore and the demon is now free. Itachi spoke up. We also need to tell him that all the other demons are. Stronger now, Hokage-sama, Itachi Uchiha, and Kisame Hashigaki are leaving, should we fight? After getting over his shock, one of the ANBU asked when they heard his voice. All of the other shinobi in Kanoha stood up and looked to their Kage for orders. No, bear, let them go. We need to worry about bigger things, Tsunade answered, keeping her eyes on the middle of the crater. We can't risk having Team 7, 8, Guy, and 10 fight S-Class shinobi. So let's go back to Kanoha, Hai, Hokage-sama, Jiraiya, and... Tsunade stayed at the crater while the rest of the group jumped into the trees and went toward the village. What should we do now? Jiraiya turned toward the village and asked. I just don't know, she said. Tsunade gave a sigh. After that, they jumped into the trees and got back to Kanoha quickly. Naruto woke up with a start and jumped to his feet quickly as he looked around. He was in a strange hallway with a lot of doors. The floor was some kind of pitch black wood with stars painted on it, but the roof was white. The hallway seemed to go on forever, stretching far away and having a never-ending number of doors evenly spaced apart. He noticed that each door was a different color and made of a different material. A plaque next to each door had small words carved into it. He looked at the nearest plaque and saw that he could understand the words, even though they were written in a language he didn't know, Bleach Universe Rome 5. Before he could figure out what it meant, he heard the sound of a shoe on the wooden floor from behind him. When he quickly turned around, he took a basic fighting stance. Only when he saw who was behind him did he drop it. Ah, uh, I see you're awake. Juby said, smirking at how jumpy the blonde was. All right, thanks. Naruto mumbled and turned around to look again. How long have I been gone, and what's been going on? From what I can tell, the regeneration took a lot longer than it should have and made me very tired. You've been gone for about a day. Juby answered, also looking around. About your ability to heal, I guess it's my fault that I didn't tell you before. 
That got the blonde's attention, and he turned his head quickly to look at his friend with dark hair. Over time, your body got used to having my chakra flow through it, Juby said. Once I was set free, you stopped having that power over me. All right, Naruto said after a moment. No, that doesn't answer my question, Juby snapped. I'm getting to it, and rolled his eyes to act annoyed. It took longer for your body to heal because it had to fix your chakra coils and change them to work best with the amount of energy that is now flowing through you. You also had to make completely new coils to hold your Riatsu and Ki. After you regenerated, your new coils didn't have enough time to fully sync with your body. This wouldn't have been a big deal if you hadn't changed shape right after, which only made things worse. I'm surprised you stayed standing as long as you did, to be honest. The blonde nodded as she thought about that. So, for how long will my body be out of sync then? While you were sleeping, it should have healed up completely. I don't think you'll have any more problems. Juby turned toward one end of the hallway and said, yes. But, just to be safe, you should give it a little more time. The blonde agreed with that and took another look around him. Okay, but where are we? Of course, the multiverse, Juby said in a snide way, as if that should be clear. Each of these doors leads to a different world. Come with me. As Naruto followed the demon god, he went past doors of different colors and styles until they got to an orange door with tiny spirals carved into it. He looked at the plaque and was shocked by what he saw. The words carved into the material caught him by surprise. Wow, they named the universe after me? Naruto yelled, and his voice made it clear that he was surprised. No, not really. Each door and plaque looks different to each person, which makes it easier to find what you're looking for. Juby stopped in front of the door and spoke. This just says home verse to me, and the door is completely black. To you, it says something else, and the door is a different color. Now hurry up, because I have a lot to say and not enough time to say it. After saying this, he opened the door and walked in, with Naruto close behind. When Naruto walked into the room, he found himself in a large circular room with ten doors of different colors. The floor was covered with a soft red carpet, and the roof was still the same pure white as the hallway. In the middle of the room is a large round table with three chairs evenly spaced around it. In the middle of the table is a small basin with a dark liquid in it. This room is the main universe, where all the realms connect and where the patron gods live. The fact that Kami and Shinigami aren't here right now saves us a lot of trouble, but I don't want to deal with them right now. Juby explained, making a face when he talked about the other gods. As you can see, there are many doors that lead to many different realms. Just like with the hallway, the number of realms is different for each person. And exactly what is a realm? Naruto asked because he thought he knew the answer but wanted to be sure. A realm is another universe like the one you come from, but with some differences, Juby said as he waved his hand carelessly in the direction of the doorways. There are a lot of things that can cause a realm to be made, like me not being sealed inside you or you being born a girl, but not small things like you not liking ramen or forgetting to put on your shoes one day. Okay, I understand how that works. Naruto replied while looking at one door. How come there are only 10 doors for me? I can think of a lot of things that could be different. Ah yes, hum Juby as he turned toward the table. There may be thousands or even millions of different realms, but most of them have been shut down by Kami or Shinigami for different reasons. You can only go through the doors you can see. Now, let's talk about why I brought you here in the first place. You mean I'm not here just so you can lecture me? With a sly grin, Naruto asked. Haha, that's very funny, said Juby, rolling his eyes again. No, this is important. Do you remember what I told you about the decree about the multiverse? You mean the one about there being no lasting changes? Yes, but I thought you should know it only works in other universes. Juby told us. Anything you change in your own universe, even if it's another realm, will stay that way. Naruto looked at the ten doors and couldn't help but smile. He could do whatever he wanted in each of the ten separate worlds. Thank you, Jubisama, for telling me about this. The blonde answered, and his tone was full of fake respect. This is the best thing anyone could do for me, well, besides giving me nine cool skills, but you know what I mean. Yeah, well, whatever. The demon laughed and took something out of his pocket, then threw it to the blonde. 
Now, please take this Naruto grabbed the item out of the air with a quick flick of his arm and opened his hand to look at it. The item in question was a simple silver ring with a red gem set in it. Around the stone, small symbols were carved into the silver. A ring? What is this? Naruto asked as he put the ring on the right index finger of his right hand. It's not the ring that's important, but the gem. Juby looked at the small red stone and replied, While you were sleeping, I went to a few of the universes you wanted to go to and put a similar gem by the door of each one. As soon as the demon's eyes fell on the gem, it seemed to light up from the inside. Each gem is made from my own solidified chakra and is connected to the others. As long as you have that ring, you can travel to the other gems or to my location. Juby kept talking, which made the blonde look down at the ring with awe in his eyes. Don't lose that ring. If you travel the multiverse without it or me to guide you, you'll be punished. Once you go to a gem, it will destroy itself, making it impossible to go back without a guide. When you've been to all of the gems, you'll have to go back to your own universe. Wow, thanks so much, this really helps. Naruto replied with a big grin. I was afraid I'd have to go from door to door and read the plaques. Glad I could help. Please leave now, I need to rest. I used up way too much energy making these gems and fulfilling your requests. Tiredly, Juby grumbled and yawned. Good luck on your travels, and if you meet any patron gods, try to be nice and stay out of trouble. Okay, I'll see you later, Fox. Have a good nap, Naruto said as he sent his chakra into the ring. Strange tugging came from his stomach, and in a flash of red light, he was gone. As soon as the blonde left, Juby turned on his heel and looked straight at the basin carved into the table in the middle of the room. After a few seconds, the water in the basin started to glow and light up the whole room. Slowly, two balls of light rose from the basin and hung in the air for a few seconds before breaking apart and floating toward two of the chairs. The first orb was pure white and had a golden aura around it. It gave off a warm and light feeling. In contrast to its partner, the second orb was completely black and seemed to absorb all the warmth and light around it. Are you sure that telling him about the realms was a good idea? When the black ball talked, it pulsed. Don't worry so much, Shinigami. Those worlds have fallen from grace and are going to be destroyed anyway, the white orb said, its aura rippling as it spoke. Why shouldn't the boy play? After all he's been through, it's the least we can do for him. Kami's right, the boy deserves his fun. Juby added, taking the empty seat at the table. Besides, it will be quite entertaining to watch. Indeed. With a flash of red light, Naruto found himself standing in the endless hallway once more. Well, that was fast. He muttered, taking a look around. Now then, where am I headed first? A sound from behind drew his attention, causing the blonde to spin on his heel, hands up in protection. He was just in time to see a small, red stone falling off a plaque, turning to dust and vanishing before it hit the ground. Well, that answers that, the blonde chuckled, making his way to the door and plaque. The door before him was quite different than that of his own universe. This one was painted with the design of a large ship sailing upon the ocean, the sky shining gold while the ocean was a deep blue. Paying the door only a moment's attention, Naruto turned to the plaque, eyes glittering in curiosity. Point one piece universe realm 16, D. What kind of name is D? Naruto wondered, brow raised in thought. Well, whatever, I guess I should hurry up and go in, because I already know what I want from this universe. He opened the door, walked in, and looked around. The door closed itself behind him. This room was very different from the last one. Even though the room was also round, with doors on the walls and a white ceiling, there was a huge pond in the middle that seemed to take up most of the room, leaving only a small path around the edge. I in the middle of the pond, there was a big tree that looked like it grew right out of the ground. It was up to 20 meters tall and 2 meters wide. Instead of leaves, the branches were covered in all kinds of different fruits, each one a different color and shape. There were purple bananas with swirls on them, orange pears with circles on them, and even a pink pineapple with triangles on it. It was a very impressive sight. Isn't it beautiful? A voice asked, making the blonde jump in fear. When Naruto looked in the direction of the voice, he saw a man sitting just to his right. The man stood about 5 feet 8 inches tall and had short black hair, chocolate brown eyes, and a big, happy smile across his face. He was dressed in a light blue t-shirt, a dark yellow vest, green shorts, and green flip-flops. 
On his head was a black pirate captain's hat with a white skull and crossbones and a red band around the edge. Yes, it is. So you're D, right? Naruto tried to hide his shock and surprise as he asked. Yes, that's me, it's Davy Jones, he said. The man replied with a bigger grin. You have to be Naruto. Naruto asked, not minding that the man sounded like a pirate. How did you dash as soon as you came into my domain? I knew who you were and what you were after. D answered as he put his feet in the pool. Ah, uh, you don't mind, do you? Naruto asked, keeping his tone as polite as possible. Jones said, not at all, and his eyes closed as his smile grew wider. I might even help you out if you do me a favor first. Oh, well, I'm not the type to refuse help from a god. Naruto said something as he moved away from this strange person. I'm sure you're less evil than the last god I met, so what's your favor? D laughed at the blonde's comment and said, there's a big trouble in one of my realms. I could fix the problem, but it would be easier for you to ask me, because then we'd both get what we want. Okay, I guess that makes sense, said the blonde, nodding to himself. Tell me what I need to do to fix it. One of the people you're looking for will lead that world down a dark path, D said, tilting his head to the side. I ask that you kill him after you get what you need. I ask you to be careful, though, because any changes you make to that world will be permanent, so don't kill anyone other than the target. Okay, I can handle that, Naruto agreed. He hadn't planned to kill anyone, but if a god asked him to, he would. Who's there? In your world, I have more than one goal in mind. In the blink of an eye, the god had moved. Before Naruto could do anything, he appeared in front of him and tapped him on the head. When you see him, you'll know that I've helped you find him. Now go through door number 10, which is the red one over there. It will take you to your first goal, and your journey will start from there. Naruto went over to the door and read the sign, trying not to show how surprised and creeped out he was by the god's speed. He thought it would be a good idea to know how this world is different before he left Point One Piece Universe Realm 10, if I remember the manga right, Naruto thought as he thought back to when he read the One Piece manga. I'll have less than a week between my first and second goals, which is a bit rushed, but I'm sure I can do it. He opened the door with his hand and stepped inside, only to find himself in a small white room. Huh, now what? Have fun, and goodbye, D's voice said. Before Naruto could turn around, the door slammed shut. As soon as the door shut, everything around Naruto changed. He went from standing in a small white room to falling from hundreds of feet above the ocean. The blonde yelled, crap, crap, and his voice was heard all the way across the sky. Damn you, D. Okay, think of Naruto. You're falling hundreds of feet, and it'll hurt a lot if you hit the water like this. Naruto was angry, and as he fell, dozens of thoughts went through his head. What the hell should I do? Damn it! A light bulb flickered above his head as he fell past a group of birds. Duh! I could just grow wings and fly, but I'm not willing to take that risk right now, at least not without some practice first. Let's try something else. Naruto turned off his ability to heal for a moment, then made one of his nails grow and cut his thumb with it, letting his blood cover the whole thing. He flew through a set of hand seals and put as much chakra as he could into the jetsu while focusing on an image. Summoning Jetsu There was a puff of smoke, then a crow card, and then, there was another puff of smoke as Naruto crashed into the bird and got rid of it. To hell with it all. Damn me and my stupid limiting seals, what was that damn release phrase again? The blonde swore and tried hard to remember what information had come with his limiting seals. Yeah, Cromwell Initiative, full release. As soon. As he said the words, Naruto felt a huge increase in the amount of chakra he could use. The block in his chakra disappeared, and the seals on his hands disappeared in a flash of light. Back at full power, the blonde poured as much chakra as he could into his hands and flew through another set of hand seals, trying his best to ignore the fast approaching ocean. Summoning Jetsu The second puff of smoke was much bigger than the first one, and the blonde disappeared into it. Ka ka. When its summoners yelled, a huge crow flew out of the smoke cloud with a loud. A blonde-haired teen sat confidently on its head. Naruto smiled as he looked down at the crow he had summoned. It was even bigger than Gamabunta and looked like any other crow except for its eyes. 
Instead of having small, sharp eyes like most birds, this one seemed to have big, black eyes with blue diamonds around the pupils, just like its summoner. Not only could Naruto control the bird with his mind, but he could also see through its eyes, which would take some getting used to. Wow, that's really strange, the blonde laughed, blinking over and over as his brain tried to figure out what was going on. Naruto told his summon to look down, and when it did, he gasped when he saw that he was only a few meters above the water. Holy crap, that was close. If I ever see that jerk D again, I'll punch him in the face, no matter what the results are. He looked around and tried to remember what he knew from the manga to figure out where and when he was. He was able to figure out where he was because he could see a huge gate in the distance and what looked like a fleet of ships heading toward an island in the middle of a circular pit in the ocean. Huh, that jerk must have known what he was doing because I'm right where I wanted to be. Naruto laughed and then turned to face the island. If I remember right, this should be right at the end of the Eni's lobby arc. I should hurry and get to my target before something happens. Just a few minutes ago, the marines on their ships were shocked and amazed when they saw Monkey D. Luffy beat Rob Lucci, which caught them all by surprise. It's unthinkable that the strongest member of the CP9 would lose to a lowly pirate after the Straw Hat Pirates beat the CP9, they gave the order to the marine ships, and the buster call started. They had just destroyed the ship that the pirates were going to use to escape. Most of the crew was trapped on the last part of the bridge, and they were aiming their cannons at the tower where Monkey D. Luffy was stuck over the Din Din Mushy. A message was sent out. Aim all the cannons at the first prop. Obliterate Straw Hat Luffy immediately, said the crews of the cannons that were still facing the tower on the bridge that had been destroyed. The crew of the Going Mary did everything they could to save Luffy and keep him from dying. Unfortunately, they were all stuck on one part of the bridge fighting the captains and lieutenants of the marines, while Luffy was stuck in the tower and couldn't move. Who is it? Whose voice is that? Usopp suddenly yelled and turned his head around. I told you they were my men, he said. Frankie answered, but he didn't understand what his friend was asking. No. That voice isn't it. Usopp answered. It's been around for quite a while. Huh? Monkey D, Luffy was in pain as he lay on the floor and could do nothing but wait for his death. He had used up almost all of his strength fighting Rob Lucci. His whole body hurt, and he could only move his fingers and toes. He couldn't defend himself, and he couldn't move or dodge, then he thought he heard a voice. Below? Luffy murmured to himself, his voice thick with confusion. Look down. I really can hear it. Usopp yelled to his other crew members. What? Below? Who? Nami yelled, stopping a nearby marine's attack. What's that? Sanji asked as his leg flew out and hit a marine captain on the head. I said look below. Chopper yelled and hopped around with joy. Now, they could all hear the same voice, a voice that came from inside their minds and told them to look down. Firing at Straw Hat Luffy in five seconds. Luffy! Jump into the ocean, yelled Usopp towards the ocean. Usopp kept on yelling. Usopp? Zoro asked, wondering what his crewmate was thinking. Three Usopp turned to Robin and excitedly pointed at the tower. Robin, can you put Luffy in the water? She nodded to say, leave it to me. Two, are you trying to commit suicide? Zoro yelled as he killed man after man with his swords. One, as the marines got ready to shoot, a huge shadow swept by and a cry could be heard all the way across the ocean. Caw! Caw! Everyone turned their heads to the sky and stared wide-eyed at what had to be the biggest bird in the world flying over the island and the ships that as they watched. The bird flew down and landed right on the water, protecting the tower and Monkey D. Luffy with its huge body. Hello to the marines and pirates! A voice told them to look up, up, and up at the bird's head, a man sat on top of the bird's head, almost hidden by its feathers. He was about 17 years old, with spiky blonde hair and bright blue eyes. He wore a thin red shirt and loose red pants. On top of that, he wore a black cloak with a hood, and on his feet, he wore wooden getta. Naruto had just landed where he knew the going merry would surface. He told his summon to grab the ship with its talons and then turned his attention to the marine forces. He called out, hello, marines and pirates. To get their attention, everyone just stared at him in shock for a while before a voice came over the Din Din Mushy and said something. Who are you? Are you one of these pirate slaves? No, no, not at all. 
Naruto replied, and his voice was amplified with chakra so that it could be heard across the ocean. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I was just passing through the area when I saw what was going on, and since I'm a nice guy, I decided to help the side that was losing. Then you will die with the pirates. A few seconds later, the voice spoke back. All ships head for that thing. Destroy it. Naruto watched with a dark grin as all the ships in the sea turned their cannons on him and aimed at the body of his summon. Shadow clone technique. It's time to see how strong I really am that a dozen blondes jumped out of the crow's head with a puff of smoke and landed next to each member of the Straw Hat crew and their friends. Before anyone could react, they were still stunned from seeing the cloning technique. Each clone grabbed a member of the Straw Hat crew, jumped away, and pulled that person onto the bird. A small group of clones appeared next to Rob Lucci and pulled him along with them toward the crow. Ignoring the ships and their cannons, Naruto walked over to Lucci and knelt down by his side. His hands hovered over Lucci's wounds and mouth. What are you doing? Nami screamed and jumped to her feet, which was hard because she didn't have enough chakra to stick to the creature's head. You just put us all in the line of fire, so we have to get out of here. Don't worry, we'll be okay. Naruto laughed and smiled at the crew before turning back to the body with his brow furrowed. Now be quiet and let me concentrate. The Straw Hats were amazed to see what looked like blood coming out of Luchi's wound and a dark yellow light coming out of his mouth at the same time. Both things rose into the air and landed in the hands of the blondes. What in the hell was that? Sanji asked with wide open eyes. I don't know, but we have more important things to worry about, Robin said, looking down at the ships. When the rest of the crew looked around, they gasped when they saw that all the other ships had finished aiming and were now getting ready to fire, with their cannons locked on the birds. Naruto, on the other hand, just stood there with his hands in a cross shape as he called up his chakra. With a puff of smoke, a shadow clone jumped toward the bridge, carrying Rob Lucci by the shoulders. When Naruto's job was done, he told the bird to fly away. When it did, he smiled widely. Do not let them get away. All ships opened fire. As the bird was getting ready to fly, the ships fired their cannons, aiming hundreds of cannonballs at one spot. The Straw Hats closed their eyes and got ready for the blow, but Naruto just laughed and raised his right hand. The blonde used her will to send out a pulse of telekinetic power that stopped the cannonballs in the air. When they didn't feel anything, the crew opened their eyes, and their jaws dropped just like the marines. Naruto spoke as he stared at the ship in front of him. His voice carried well over the distance. You fools are lucky that I don't have the time to kill you all. His tone was cold and made it clear that, if he had the chance, he would kill them. Naruto threw the balls into the ocean and told his. Summoned to fly away because he wanted to get the Straw Hat's help as soon as possible. The crow took off with a powerful flap of its huge wings, carrying Naruto, the Straw Hat crew, Frankie, Kokoro, Ganbi, and Chimmy on its head and the Going Merry in its claws. Admiral of the World Government Akiji had just gotten to Ennis Lobby in time to see the damage that had been done. Soon, one of the vice admirals in charge gave him a full report, which shocked, annoyed, and kind of amused him. Still, he had to get his work done. He turned to one of the Marine grunts and told him, tell Marine HQ that Ennis Lobby was a loss for the world government. Oh, and make sure that they put up a reward for this Uzumaki Naruto. Thank you for getting us out of there. Even though he was hurt, Luffy cheered and smiled widely. Naruto looked over at his crew, who were all sitting on their ride and doing their best not to fall off. He grinned widely. Don't bring it up. I'm sure you guys would have been fine without me. Maybe, but thanks anyway. And where are we going? Nami looked around at the ocean below and asked. Water 7. Naruto answered, taking the island's location right out of their minds. The Frankie family, Galila, Giants, King Bulls, and Yakuzunari rode the Puffing Tom back to Water 7, keeping their eyes on the big flying animal far below and behind them. Naruto talked with the rest of the Straw Hat crew on the way back to Water 7. It took him a few tries to show them that his powers didn't come from some kind of devil fruit, and he had to make up a story to explain how he learned to use chakra. After five years of meditating at the top of the mountain without food or water, I was blessed by the sacred mountain goat people. Naruto finished his story while trying as hard as he could to keep a straight face. Wow, that's really neat. Chopper yelled, his eyes shining like stars. Naruto's sweat fell as he looked around at the shocked looks on Luffy, Chopper, and Usopp's faces. How trusting are they? 
After the blonde finished his silly story, Zoro asked him something that had been bothering him for a while before the blonde started another silly story. What up, Naruto? Zoro started, which got the attention of the blondes. What was that thing you did back there, the one with Luchi? When they heard that, the others perked up because they had been wondering the same thing. Oh, yeah, that's... Naruto started, smiling widely as they all got closer. A secret. The crow shook as all of its passengers fell on their faces at the same time. Naruto started laughing because he was having so much fun with these guys. For the first time in a long time, he could hang out with people who didn't hate him or try to put him down with every sentence. It was a nice change of pace. So the flight went on, and Naruto and the Straw Hats talked and shared stories. He had already read about most of their adventures, but it was still fun to listen to everyone talk. After an hour, they got to Water 7, where Naruto left his passengers and the ship on Crap Island and stopped his summon. Well, guys, it's been fun, but I have to go, so take care. As soon as Naruto told them, Luffy and Chopper grabbed him and started crying. No, you can't leave yet, Naruto. Come join my group. Luffy cried, which made the rest of his crew feel bad. We can do a lot of fun things. I really wish I could, Luffy, but I still have to do things on my own. Naruto answered with a sad smile. Maybe I'll come back and see you guys again someday, all right? We understand. Nami smiled and helped Robin try to get the two people off of him. We might see each other again. After saying goodbye, Naruto turned around and ran across the ocean, which left everyone else in awe. As he left Water 7, he could hear a voice in the back of his mind telling him which way to go. He thought this was Davy Jones helping him. Naruto ran across the ocean during the day for the next four days to build up his reserves and control. This was hard because his limiter seals only let him use a certain amount of chakra at a time. When he ran out of chakra, he would let go of a level of the seal to call up a sea creature to ride, usually a whale or a big turtle. He would then rest for an hour or two before calling up clones to do more chakra exercises while he did push-ups, sit-ups, and laps on whatever animal he was on. He kept doing this for a few days until he decided he was ready to take in what he had taken from Rob Lucci. Naruto focused on his vortices and told them to break up all the information and power he had taken in and combine it with his body. The first change he noticed was in his body. His muscles seemed to bulge out and get bigger for a few seconds before they went back to normal and his body went back to how it looked before. Even though his body didn't change, his strength did. The next change was in his chakra reserves, but it wasn't much of an increase. This was mostly because people on this world didn't use any kind of energy, so he'd only been able to absorb and change enough power from Luchi to power an average academy student. Still, what he wanted from Luchi wasn't energy. That came next. He wanted Luchi's memories and the things he knew. He smiled as he felt the memories flood into his mind. The new information being downloaded into his mind gave him a slight headache, but that was nothing compared to using shadow clones to read and train. As soon as the absorbing was done, Naruto felt a sudden anger and a need to fight that he couldn't explain. He knew they were feelings from Luchi, so he pushed them down and tried to push the feelings as far back as he could. In the back of his mind, he could still feel the anger. It was easy to hold it back, but it was still there. It seems like I not only get their memories, but also their strongest feelings and personality traits. Naruto thought about it and rubbed his chin. After each absorption, I'll have to be careful or I'll lose control, just like with the QB's chakra. Naruto sat down on the back of his nighttime summon, a huge sea serpent with the first level of the Ujagan in its eyes, and then went into his mindscape and went to Jubi's cage. Instead of the big golden cage he was used to seeing, there was now a huge bookcase that took up the whole wall and reached high into the sky. Each shelf held hundreds of books, all of which had blank white covers. As he looked, one of the books turned a dark yellow color, and the words Rob Lucci were written in black ink on the binding. Naruto took the book off the shelf and spent the rest of the night reading through Lucci's memories. He threw away the ones that didn't help him and kept the ones that did, like the ones about the Rokushiki style. He couldn't get rid of the strong feelings and personality traits that came with the absorption, which was a shame. The next two days were spent on the back of a summon, working on the Rokushiki style and making it fit his body shape since it was different from Lucci's. Six days after leaving the Straw Hat crew, Naruto arrived on Bonero Island just as a huge ball of fire crashed into a cloud of darkness. Huh, I guess they got going without me. Naruto laughed to himself as he moved toward the fight. 
He got there just in time to see Fire Fist Ace pass out, and Blackbeard's big body was coming up to the man's body with a knife. Well, well, well. Blackbeard laughed, and his deep voice was heard all around. Well, I guess the chase is over, Commander Ace. With that, he raised his sword and got ready to drop it on the helpless back of his opponent. Storm leg, someone shouted in a strong voice, Blackbeard was hit in the back by a crescent-shaped blade of air, which blew him away and caused him to land several meters away with a painful thud. The other four Blackbeard pirates and their horse perked up and turned their heads to see who was attacking. It was a blonde who was grinning and had his right leg stretched up. Hey, yelled the Blackbeard pirate's captain, Jesus Burgess. Who in the hell do you think you are? Don't you guys read the newspaper? Blackbeard growled and shakily got to his feet. His back hurt a little, but he wasn't hurt in any other way. That's Diamond Eyes Uzumaki Naruto. He's owed 120 million belly for helping the Straw Hats get away from Ini's lobby. Hmm, I guess I need to work on that technique more, because that should have gone right through him. Naruto thought, making a small frown. Marshal D. Teach, also known as Blackbeard. Naruto lowered his leg and moved into a loose fighting stance to start. I'm here for your head. Teach laughed, and a few seconds later, so did the rest of his crew. Is that so? I just beat one of Whitebeard's top commander's commanders. What makes you think you can do better? The big pirate took a step forward and waved a hand over his crew. Even if you beat me, you won't be able to beat my group. Why don't you just turn around and leave us alone? Naruto spoke as he looked at each member of the crew, who all had sly smiles on their faces. Teach, I don't think I can win against you. Using the Rokushiki's shave technique, he disappeared in a flash and reappeared in front of Blackbeard. I know that I can. Before the pirate could react, Naruto hit Blackbeard in the gut with a punch that was stronger than both of them put together. The blow knocked the man back a few meters, right into his crew. When they tried to catch him, they all slid back a few inches, Blackbeard cried out in pain, arg, and fell to one knee. He packs quite a punch, doesn't he? Captain? Blackbeard's navigator, Lafitte, laughed. Yeah. Blackbeard coughed and rubbed his stomach, which hurt. I'm probably still tired from fighting Fire Fist, so please help me with this. With a nod to each other, the five men jumped apart and each went to fight in the way they had planned. Lafitte grew long, white wings like an angel's, and took off into the air with his cane in one hand and a gun in the other. Jesus Burgess and Blackbeard each pulled out two pistols. Doc Q grabbed his scythe, and Van Auger jumped on top of a nearby pile of rubble and took careful aim with his rifle. Naruto turned on the second level of his Ujagan and slipped back into his fighting stance with a confident grin, ready to move at any moment. I guess it's time to find out how much I've changed. When they got a signal they couldn't see, the four gunmen all fired at the same spot. Naruto used his telekinetic power to throw up a psychic shield, which made the bullets go around him in a smooth curve. After saying that, he started running toward the group. As he got faster, his movements got blurry. Lafitte put his gun back in its holster and picked up his cane. He hovered in the air as he looked for a chance to shoot. Van kept firing his sniper rifle at Naruto from atop his jump pile. When the bullets hit Naruto's shield, they slowed him down. Doc Q ran to meet Naruto as he got closer, raising his scythe high in the air behind him. As the scythe came down, Naruto jumped into the air and easily jumped over both the scythe and the person holding it. When he landed behind the shocked doctor, he turned around and hit the man in the back with a powerful kick that sent him flying. Doc took off across the landscape, and Naruto ducked down to avoid Jesus' left hook. He quickly spun around again, and this time his chakra-enhanced fist hit his opponent in the middle of the body, sending him flying away from Doc Q. Without stopping for a second, Naruto went from punching to rolling, and bullets hit the spot where he used to stand Blackbeard was about to hit Naruto with a powerful uppercut when he jumped to his feet and had to quickly lean back. Even though he was big, the pirate got up quickly and threw a few more punches, but they had no effect. When Naruto turned on his Ujagan, he could easily see where the blows were coming from. This let him easily avoid them by using the paper drawing technique. This, however, left him open, which gave Lafitte a chance to attack, which he did. But as the man got closer, Naruto heard the sound of his flapping wings, giving him time to ACT.TO avoid getting hit again, Naruto grabbed Blackbeard's arm and jumped up onto his shoulders. He then used Blackbeard as a springboard to jump over Lafitte, who was coming up behind him. 
the pirate with wings was flying through the air when he got a fast kick. He fell to the ground and hit Blackbeard, sending them both head over heels. When Naruto landed on his feet, he used his shield to block more bullets. Then, he waved his hand and sent a burst of psychic energy toward Van, which made the man's rifle fly out of his hands and land a few feet away. Shave, yelled the blonde, who disappeared from his spot and reappeared in front of Van with his right arm back and his index finger out. Finger gun. He moved so quickly that he hit Van's left shoulder joint with his finger, going right through the skin, bone, and cartilage. Yua, yelled the sniper, whose arm hung limp at his side. This made Naruto grin darkly. The more he fought, the more he could feel Luchi's bloodlust slipping out, and he couldn't deny that he liked it. Naruto jumped off the pile of rubble, turned around, and looked at the damage he'd done with a big grin on his face. Doc Q and Jesus were just getting up after being hit by his stronger blows. Lafitte and Teach were also making their way to them, but without his other arm, Van was probably out of the fight, so Naruto dropped his shield. Unfortunately, he felt someone next to him right at the moment when he was no longer safe. When he quickly turned around, his eyes got big when Doc's horse kicked him in the gut. The blonde grunted as he landed painfully at Doc's feet after flying across the battlefield. Doc didn't waste any time swinging his side down at Naruto's chest. By rolling to the side, Naruto was able to avoid a fatal blow, but he lost his left arm in the process. When the rest of Blackbeard's crew saw this, they laughed and felt more sure of themselves because they had just dealt a critical blow to such a powerful opponent. Blackbeard spoke to the blonde who was on his knees and had turned over to look at the stump where his arm used to be. Well, I'll give you props for holding out this long, kid, but you've lost and you won't last long without your arm. Naruto looked back at the big pirate and tilted his head to the side as if he were thinking about the idea. His face was blank for a few seconds and then he smiled big. Nope. Standing up, the blonde stopped trying to slow down his healing and let his healing factor do its job. As his arm grew back in a matter of seconds, he laughed to himself at the look on his opponent's faces. What in the hell? Jesus yelled, his eyes wide with shock. What kind of devil's fruit power is that? None. Naruto answered and tried out his new arm by flexing it. I did all of this. That can't be. Doc yelled, his eyes getting bigger as he thought. Believe whatever you want, are we going to fight or what? Rolling his arm, Naruto asked. Guys, it's time to stop, get over here. Blackbeard said, putting on a mask of anger to hide his surprise. As a pitch black aura started to form around their captain, the rest of his crew ran to where he was and fell in behind him. Blackbeard used his fruit's powers and focused on Naruto as he held out his hand to him. Spiral Black Naruto felt a strong pull on his body, and all of a sudden he was flying toward Blackbeard, pulled by a force he couldn't see. The big form of Jesus rushed past his captain in a blur of motion. His fist smashed into Naruto's face and threw him to the ground, making a big crater around his body. Blackbeard walked over to the blonde with a triumphant grin and grabbed him by the throat. His chest moved up and down as he laughed. My fruit gives me control over both darkness and gravity. When the pirate spoke, his hand was surrounded by a black aura. It also lets me cancel out all other fruit abilities with a single touch. I don't know what fruit you ate, but let's see how you heal without it. Blackbeard held the blonde up and gave a nod to Doc, who raised his scythe, and Lafitte, who took a blade out of the end of his cane. Together, they cut off Naruto's arms and legs and cut him in half horizontally at the waist, all while the blonde was grinning at Blackbeard. Before they could even put down their weapons, the blonde's arms and legs grew back, along with his clothes, which shocked the Blackbeard crew. Naruto grinned as he spoke and laughed at the look on their faces. Blackbeard, you can't beat me, so you might as well give up because this is getting boring. Everyone on the crew stumbled back and looked at him with wide, scared eyes. Who are you? What are you? Van stumbled out, and his horse looked just as shocked as he did. Naruto answered by changing his eyes to their final form, which was a red diamond on a black background. Me? I'm not simple. Naruto narrowed his eyes and focused on another of his powers. He grabbed the electrical signals running through his opponent's body. Kneel. As soon as he gave the order, he reached out and took away their ability to move, which made them all fall to their knees. This was mostly done to shock and impress, with Luchi's bloodlust giving the whole thing a shot of excitement. He could see the fear in their eyes and even smell it coming off of them. Teach, it's time to die. 
Naruto laughed and picked up two of his discarded limbs from the ground. He used his ability to change his shape to join them together into a large executioner's axe. Anything else to say? Wait, why don't you join my group? With our combined powers, we can rule Dash Teach started to say something, but Naruto cut him off when he swung the axe and cut off the top half of his head. Too wordy. Naruto had a blank look on his face as the body hit the ground. Naruto smiled as he looked into the eyes of the other members. He liked. Seeing the fear in their eyes. With just one look, he was able to use his powers to hypnotize them all. Their eyes grew heavy as he did this. He told the tall three, take Fire Fist Ace to Water Seven and give him to the Straw Hat Pirates. The tall three nodded and did as he said. Tell them who saved Ace and tell them I hope to see them again someday. You can go on with your lives after leaving Water 7. Yes, Naruto-sama. They all answered in a calm, emotionless way, and their voices blended together as they spoke. As they stood, they walked over to Ace and picked him up. Then, they left slowly to do what the blondes told them to do. Naruto laughed as he looked down at Blackbeard's body and knelt with his hands over the pirate's head. Like with Luchi, a stream of blood went into one vortex and a black light went into the other. Naruto didn't hold onto the samples like he did last time. Instead, he broke them up and absorbed them right away. A few seconds later, his body seemed to swell to three times its normal size, with muscles bulging and straining, before shrinking back to normal. As with Luchi, the energy he took in was worth very little, but Blackbeard gave him a much bigger physical boost. Blackbeard was built for strength and endurance, while Luchi was built for speed and quick strikes. Naruto could feel his body getting stronger by the second. Even though he had a headache because of the new memories, Naruto pushed away the feelings of greed and extreme thirst for adventure that Blackbeard gave him and went into his mindscape. He walked up to the bookcase and saw that another book had been colored in, this time in black with great text on the binding. Putting the book down, he started to get rid of all the memories he didn't need. He found that by getting rid of a lot of memories, he was able to calm the feelings that were about to overwhelm him. Once the fight was over, Naruto stretched out his new muscles and thought about the whole thing again and again. I'll admit that I'm a lot stronger now. Those guys were some of the strongest men in the world. But that doesn't make me the best, at least not yet. I'll have to keep trying to reach my goal. He took one last look around, and then he started putting chakra into the ring on his hand. He was getting ready to leave this universe. I should try to come back here again sometime, because the Straw Hats are such good friends. He was gone in a flash of red light. When Naruto got back to the familiar halls of the multiverse, he looked at the door in front of him. It was very different from the last two doors he had been through. The last two doors were made of wood, but this one looked like it was made of two large stones with a picture carved on them. In the middle of each door was a small red stone about the size of an apple. Inside the stone, what looked like millions and millions of faces were writhing in pain that definitely gave him the willies. Now that's just creepy, I wonder what world this is. The blonde laughed as he read what was on the plaque, Full Metal Alchemist Universe, okay, it's time to go in. Naruto made his choice and reached over to grab the door. If I asked nicely, I might be able to get what I need without going to a lot of realms. He opened the door and stepped inside in one quick motion, ready for anything. Inside the room, there was nothing at all for Naruto to do. As far as he could see, there was nothing around him. The room he walked into was a huge white space with no doors, people, or anything else. Well, this is just boring. He did a deadpan. I quite agree. The voice came from right behind him, which made Naruto turn around and put himself in a defensive position. Instead of seeing the doorway he had just come through, Naruto saw the same white space behind him with three people standing in front of him. He asked them, who are you, in a polite way, reminding himself that these were gods. The figure on the right said, I am Ishvala, the god of creation. He was a man in his mid-thirties, about three inches taller than Naruto, and his body was skinny but strong. His skin was dark brown and his eyes were a bright red, which made his long, silver hair stand out. He wore a plain black shirt with a high collar and long sleeves, black slacks, and sandals. He wore a sash over his shirt that went from his right shoulder to his left hip and back around. The sash was yellow and had three black lines running vertically around the whole thing. The second figure, who was now known to be Leto, said, I am Leto, the sun god. This one was an old man, but even though his face was old and wrinkled, his body was thick and muscular, like that of a weightlifter. 
He stood up straight and was almost seven feet tall. He had dark eyes and a fair skin tone. He had no hair on his head at all. Instead, he had a long black beard and what looked like a metal circlet with spikes on top. He wore a simple gray robe without sleeves that was tied at the waist with a golden braid of rope. On his feet, he wore brown sandals. In his left hand, he was holding a big wooden staff with a big yellow metal sun on top. The way he looked and how tall he was made him look very strong, the last figure said, and I am Truth, guardian of the gate. As it turned out, Truth looked the strangest, even more so than his other friends. He was completely white and had no features at all. If it weren't for the small black aura that surrounded him and gave him shape, he would have blended right into the background. Truth stood about four feet tall, and if you looked closely, you could just make out a big, bright smile on his face. He bowed and said, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. He was careful to be polite. What do you want in our world, Naruto Uzumaki? Ishvala asked with a sneer and a disdainful look on his face. I'm here to learn about alchemy, Lord Ishvala. Naruto replied while keeping his head down, while Leto frowned and Ishvala laughed, Truth's smile seemed to get even bigger. You did it again, Truth. Ishvala let out a grunt, and he and Leto turned to leave. When Naruto looked over at Truth, he gave him a curious look. They just don't like how everyone who comes through here is always looking for information about alchemy. Truth was told, and his smile never went away as he spoke. Since that's my area, I get to deal with all of them. Ah, Naruto said, not understanding at all. Tell me about Uzumaki Naruto, Truth said, cocking his head to the side. Why do you want to know this? As far as I can tell, people in your realm can't use alchemy. I don't want to know about alchemy in general, Naruto said, being careful with his words. You see, I have a power that lets me change my shape and body. What I want to know is how all things are made up at the atomic and molecular levels. Without that information, I'm limited in what materials I can shift my body into. Since my realm isn't as advanced as yours, it has less information on the subject. Ah, uh, I see. Truth laughed, and his smile almost split his face as he put up a hand. All right, Uzumaki Naruto, I'll give you what you want, if you can handle it. When Naruto heard a sound coming from behind him, he turned around and saw a much bigger version of the door in this universe appear out of thin air. The door slowly opened with an ominous creak, revealing a black space between the two stone slabs. He could see a lot of shadows moving around inside the doorway. These shadows were shapeless beings that were scurrying around and making ripples in the dark void. Suddenly, the void seemed to split in two, and a huge gray eye appeared in the tear. It looked down at the blonde teen. Naruto was shocked to realize that he could hear what sounded like thousands of voices whispering in the void. It was a loud hiss with no words that he could make out. He stumbled back in surprise when dozens of small, shadowy hands jumped out of the void, grabbed him, and slowly pulled him forward. He fought with all his strength and used all of his skills to try to get rid of them, but nothing worked. The shadowy limps seemed to be impossible to hurt. With a frantic shout, Naruto was pulled off his feet and sucked into the void, while the doors behind him slammed shut. I wish you luck Uzumaki Naruto. Truth laughed and his smile got a little bit smaller. Knowledge is power, and all power comes with a price. What are you willing to give up to get what you want? Naruto groaned as he stood in the void and felt a huge amount of information pour into his mind all at once. The pain was beyond anything he could have imagined. Pure, unfiltered knowledge about a wide range of things was being poured into his mind. He had some experience with his clones and information overload, so he was able to fight off the effects at first. However, the sheer amount of information flooding in was too much for him to control, and it threatened to destroy his mind. Shortly after the mental pain started, Naruto's body was torn apart at the microscopic level, causing him to feel terrible pain. As more and more knowledge was forced into his mind, he could feel more and more of his body breaking down and flowing away into the void, being drained away by the beings inside. But as soon as he was hurt, he could feel his healing factor fixing the damage and his cells growing back. He had tried many times to escape into his mindscape to get away from the pain, but he couldn't concentrate long enough to do it on purpose, and something seemed to be keeping him awake in spite of the pain. After what seemed like years of falling apart and getting back together again and again, the pain started to get better, and the flow of new information started to slow down until it stopped. The blonde groaned as he painfully opened one eye and realized that he was still in the void and still being held by the shadowy appendages. 
After a few minutes of nothing changing, the blonde finally noticed that something was different. There was a vertical line of white light shining through the dark, and it was getting bigger and bigger with every second. The line kept getting longer and longer, and soon he was looking out at the white expanse of the god's realm. The gate opened all the way, and the shadow hands let go. The blonde managed to stumble three steps past the gate before falling down. He was out before he hit the ground. Well, you made it after all. Truth laughed and crept over to the sleeping team. You are a very interesting person, Naruto Uzumaki. Inside his mindscape, Naruto watched in shock as he tried to figure out how much damage had just been done to his mind. All of the walls of his mindscape had small cracks that were slowly healing. In many places, whole chunks of stone were missing, and the walls were almost completely broken. The blonde walked over to the bookcase, which was now full of books in every color of the rainbow. He shuddered at how close he had come to breaking. Books of all sizes and colors filled the shelves, making the whole wall look like a giant rainbow. Each book had a different piece of information, Naruto sighed in frustration and made ten clones appear next to him. He needed their help to organize the new information he had just learned. Why do all the gods I meet want to kill me? He asked himself as he got to work. Naruto woke up in the gods' realm after a full day of resting and working in his mindscape. The gods' realm was so white that it was hard to see anything. Well, well, look who finally woke up. For a second there, I thought you were a mindless husk. Naruto turned to his right and groaned loudly when he saw Truth looking at him with his usual smile. Naruto got up from the floor and rubbed his eyes with one hand. What happened in there? He asked in a polite way, even though he was annoyed with the god in front of him. I knew the information overload would hurt my mind, but what was the physical pain? It felt like my whole body was being taken apart and used up. Truth laughed at that, and his smile got even bigger. You should know the rules of alchemy, Uzumaki Naruto. Everything has an equal exchange, and you can't get something without giving something up, he said, but he didn't sound amused. In this case, you got the knowledge of tens of thousands of alchemists. In exchange, the gate took away the life force of tens of thousands of people. Not many people can go through the gate and come out whole. It's really cool that you can do that, that made Naruto laugh. You couldn't have told me about this before? The smile got even bigger. How can that be fun? Naruto held his head in pain as he thought about how annoying gods need to be taught a lesson. I'll be leaving now, truth because I have so much to do and so little time. Thank you for helping me reach my goals, he mumbled, bowing much less deeply to the god. Don't bring it up. Truth answered, then turned around and walked away. You're an interesting person, Uzumaki Naruto. I'll be keeping an eye on you. Naruto muttered joy and disappeared in a flash of red light. Yes, it is very interesting. Naruto reappeared in the familiar hallway of the multiverse with a flash of red light. He was standing in front of a door that was completely different from all the other doors. For one thing, this door didn't look like it was made of metal or wood. Instead, it was made of a yellow-orange material that was completely see-through, but on the other side, it was completely dark. This is called amber. Naruto realized this when his mind gave him a name for the material he was looking at closely that he had never heard of before. With that name came a sudden flood of information about the material used to make this door, which he had never known anything about before. With this sudden flood of information came a familiar pain that made the blonde hiss and rub his temple while making a grimace on his face. At this moment, he couldn't help but curse the thing known as truth. The blonde winced and said, maybe knowing everything about everything wasn't such a good idea after all. Curse you looking back. Why aren't you always there when I need you? The blonde sighed and looked back at the piece of amber that was the door. With his sharp eyes, he could see the many red, star-shaped objects that were embedded in the stone. He counted 28 of them, and they were all in a circle around the door handle. Naruto already had a good idea where this door led, so he looked at the plaque and grinned when he saw that his guess was right. Dragon Ball Universe Realm 26, the Dragon Ball Universe, huh? Naruto mused with a wide grin. That's great, I'll finally be able to use all this key. He had already tried many times to practice with both his key and his Ryoku, trying to control the two energies and do techniques with them. He was never good at controlling chakra or making jutsu, which was a shame. He soon learned that without the right knowledge, ki and ryoku were much harder to control and manipulate than chakra. 
In fact, he couldn't even control them with hand signs. He had to use the methods that were used in the universes where Ki and Ryoku came from. Still grinning widely, the blonde grabbed the door handle and pulled the large amber slab open. Without pausing, she stepped through the doorway and into the room. The room you went into looked exactly like a cave, and it was a very big cave at that. The floor and walls were made of a dark, rocky material. The roof, on the other hand, went up forever and seemed to have no end. When he looked up, all he could see was darkness, total darkness. Naruto looked more closely and saw what looked like big claw marks on most of the floor and walls. Some of the marks looked like they were made by claws that were much bigger than his. At the other end of the room, right across from the door Naruto had come in through, there was a row of doors. If he had counted correctly, there were 26 of them. When Naruto heard something scraping on the ground to his left, he quickly turned around and found himself staring into the large, crimson eyeball of a huge dragon with many snake-like legs. The creature in question was covered from head to toe with large green scales. The only part of it that wasn't covered was its yellow-brown underbelly, but it seemed to be made of the same tough material as the scales. The dragon had a line of light green spikes that went from its head to its tail. These spikes, along with its razor-sharp teeth and big red eyes, made it look very scary. Both the ninja and the dragon stood still and looked at each other for a few seconds, with the ninja giving a fierce glare and the dragon shaking in fear. Naruto took a deep breath as the huge beast leaned forward until it was only a few centimeters away from him. His heart was beating very fast. The dragon gave the blonde shinobi the long sniff before moving away, which made Naruto breathe a sigh of relief. The dragon gave a snort that sounded amused, and flames shot out of its nostrils as it backed away from the blonde. Its body slowly snaked up and away, showing the blonde that it had come down from the darkness above, leaving some of its huge size hidden in the darkness. When Naruto looked up again, he almost jumped out of his skin when he saw three more sets of glowing eyes watching him from the darkness above. Naruto could only think of one thing to do in front of these four powerful beasts. He gulped and bowed low. Um, hello. The blonde squeaked, turning his eyes back to the only dragon whose body he could actually see. Even though he thought he was pretty strong, Naruto wasn't a fool. Making a god angry was one thing, but making a dragon god angry was quite another. The dragon just snorted again and went back into the darkness of the cave roof, with its eyes closing and getting darker as it went. The other three soon followed. Naruto muttered, Okay. As he scratched his head. I'm going to take that as a sign to keep going, even though the blonde looked calm. He was anything but, damn, that was a big thing. Naruto shouted in his head, and his eyes got very wide. Hell, it was at least three times as big as Jubi and Gamabunta. Naruto took a deep breath to calm his racing heart, then slowly moved toward the green door that was closest to him. He did this so he wouldn't draw any more attention from the big beasts above. He frowned as he looked at the plague and read the words carved into it. Dragon Ball Realm 18, the blonde shook his head as he opened the door and walked through it, only to find himself in a huge room. The first thing he noticed was the huge mahogany desk in front of him, behind which sat a big red man with long black hair, black eyes, and a shaggy black beard. The man was wearing a purple business suit with a white shirt and an orange tie. On top of his head was a purple helmet with two horns. He was also as tall and big as Gamabunta, even when he was sitting down, and he was looking right at Naruto. When Naruto saw that King Yema, the judge of the dead, was looking down at him, he went pale. Who in the hell are you? Yema snarled, and his deep voice filled the room. This should be a place where only the dead can go. Greetings, Yema-sama. Naruto answered with a bow and as polite a voice as he could. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I came to this place to find two souls. Is that really so? Yuma asked with a curious look on her face. Who are you looking for and why? It's my job to protect the afterlife, and I can't just let anyone who asks walk around like they own the place. Naruto was almost sure he heard the big ogre mumble something that sounded like damn science under his breath. He decided to forget about it and just answer Yuma's question. I'm not here to cause trouble or set anyone free, Yuma-sama. Naruto replied while keeping his head down. It just so happens that I know you have Frieza and Vegeta here, and I want to fight them. Yuma's eyes got really big when she heard the two names. Are you trying to kill yourself, boy? Those are the two strongest people I have put in hell. Yes, I do know. Naruto answered, and his eyes showed that he was determined. I still want to fight with them. Yuma laughed and pointed to the door on his left side. 
Oh well, it's just another person whose life I will judge later. You'll go straight to hell if you go through that door and jump off that path, but you'll have to ask around to find those two. Thank you, Yamasama Naruto said as he ran to the door. Yeah, yeah, don't mention it. Just don't bother me after you're gone. Yuma yelled at the two blondes who were running away. When Naruto left the check-in station, he was on Snake Way, a long path that floated above a plain of golden clouds. Naruto walked to the edge of the path and looked over it. He frowned when he saw that the golden clouds completely blocked his view. Naruto took a few steps back and focused, making an image in his mind. As he moved, his back cracked and split. With a spray of blood, two large bird wings with black, shiny feathers flew out of his back. Even though he had never flown before, the information he got from the gate, Shiver, helped him make wings that were the right size and strength for a person his size. He also moved his bones around so that they were lighter and hollow and could help him fly. The blonde hopped up and down to loosen up. He flapped his new appendages a few times to make sure they worked, and they did. The blonde took a deep breath and then jumped over the edge at full speed. His wings caught the wind and slowed his fall. When Naruto broke through the clouds, he was flying several hundred meters above hell, which didn't look at all like how he thought it would. He was expecting fire and brimstone, but all he saw was grass, rocks, and red pools of liquid that sparkled. To be honest, this place looked like the human realm, but in different colors and tones. When he looked around, he saw a few white clouds floating a few feet above the ground. From the manga he'd read, he knew that these clouds were souls. Naruto saw that most of the souls looked like small white clouds, but a few of them still had their original shapes. These souls were rare, though, about one for every dozen clouds. The blonde flew around for more than half an hour before he found a soul he knew and could use to find one of his targets. Naruto made his skin as hard as a diamond, pulled back his wings, and fell from the sky. He hit the ground so hard that the area around him exploded, sending souls flying and making a deep crater around him. Hello, Captain Jinyu. Naruto smiled and stepped out of the crater without getting hurt. The soul raised a hairless brow and asked, Who are you? My name is Naruto Uzumaki, but that's unimportant. Naruto stopped a few meters away from the purple-skinned being before answering. I'm looking for two souls in this world, and you'll show me where they are. Jinyu laughed at the blonde's tone, and his eyes flashed with anger. Why would I in the hell tell you anything? Jinyu asked, his voice full of pride and anger. Naruto narrowed his eyes and looked at Jinyu for a few seconds before smirking and looking at her with eyes that shone with confidence. The blonde made a cross with his hands and grabbed his chakra. He grinned as he felt the raw power flowing through his coils. Shadow clone technique. With a puff of smoke, 50 copies of himself appeared around him. This scared A. Few curious souls away, making a big circle around the two fighters. Either you'll help us for free. Naruto spoke, and 51 voices all spoke at the same time. Or we'll make you. Jinyu gave his own smirk and moved into an offensive stance, looking completely at ease with the situation. Then again, the cloning technique wasn't that impressive compared to the powers of the beings who live in this universe. The alien with horns laughed and said, make me warm. 50 clones moved forward as one, while the original stayed back and watched, Jinyu moved quickly, his arms flying out and hitting the first wave of clones. Jinyu was too fast for them to keep up with. In less than a second, more than half of the clones were gone. After their brothers died, the blondes who were still alive took in what they had learned and changed. They were now able to easily avoid blows that would have killed them before .as more and more clones died. The ones that were left got stronger and faster, making it easier and easier for them to avoid attacks and counterattack. Even so, Jinyu was soon standing alone, and the last of the clones disappeared in a puff of smoke. Is that the best that you can do? Jinyu asked with a confident smirk, I in response, Naruto just smirked and crossed his fingers again, drawing on his chakra and putting it into the jutsu. Shadow Clone Technique the look on the Jinyu's face when more than 500 blondes appeared was hilarious. Jinyu was a very strong opponent, so much so that he was able to defeat more than half of the clones even though they were getting stronger and stronger. Still, he was just one man against hundreds of skilled warriors. Jinyu was soon surrounded by dozens of clones that held him back and made it hard for him to move. Just as the real Naruto opened his mouth to tell his opponents to give up, a light purple shockwave exploded through the clones, blasting them away and getting rid of them. 
Jin Yu held out his hands and started firing key blasts at the last group of clones, killing them one by one. After the clones were taken care of, Jin Yu charged at the real Naruto with his horns out. Naruto was lucky that Jin Yu's high speeds meant the blonde Jonin's low speeds, which he could easily follow with the power of his Ujagan. Naruto was able to easily avoid the charging Jin Yu because his coils were filled with raw chakra and lightning was buzzing around his head. This made his reflexes faster. With a quick spin on his heel, the blonde landed a powerful kick on his opponent's back, but Jin Yu quickly blocked it. After blocking the attack, Jin Yu threw a punch, and his fist blurred across the distance between them. Naruto ducked just in time to avoid the blow, then cocked his right arm back and stuck out his index finger. Naruto turned his finger into a long metal spike and hit his opponent in the chest with it. The tip of the spike was glowing a pale blue. Finger gun. The spike went right through Jin Yu's battle armor and into his chest, just missing his heart by a few scant inches. The spirit let out a painful gasp as a bullet made of air and chakra shot through his body and out his back. It went a few meters before breaking up. Naruto took advantage of his opponent's moment of weakness by pulling his finger back and kicking him hard. The kick broke the battle armor and sent Jin Yu flying away. Jin Yu landed a few feet away and stood up shakily with a clear look of shock on his face. Because of the blonde's kick, his armor had a hole in the middle and several cracks all over it. How did he make such quick work of my armor? Jin Yu thought about what was going on, his eyes wide with pain. Even Lord Frieza has to hit it a few times to hurt it. Who is this boy? Jin Yu decided to play it safe, so he stayed back while he made his battle plans. He was clearly outmatched in close combat, especially when those clones were used against him. He hasn't used any key moves with a long range yet. Jin Yu saw this when he thought back on the short fight he had with the blonde. I'll keep my distance and try to catch him off guard. If I could use my body swapping technique, I would, but I don't even have a real body here. Jin Yu ignored his wounds and started to boost his ki. A purple pink aura began to form around him. Naruto rushed at his opponent because he could tell what he was going to do. He planned to take advantage of the few seconds it would take Jin Yu to get stronger. Jin Yu was ready much faster than the blonde had thought, and his aura was going away as he got ready to strike. Milky Cannon Jin Yu yelled, putting his arms out in front of him with his palms facing forward. Both of his hands were glowing with a white and purple light, a beam of pinkish energy shot at Naruto with a loud boom. It was moving too fast for him to avoid it, and it hit the blonde square in the chest. This caused a huge explosion with the blonde at its center. The explosion only lasted a moment before it stopped. It left behind a huge crater and a cloud of dust, where a group of floating souls were sleeping. As the dust settled, Jin Yu looked for his opponent with his limited senses. At that moment, he really wished he had his scouter. When he couldn't find the young blonde, he put his hands on his sides, stood up straight, and moved his head from side to side. Did I get him? He asked out loud, sounding a little surprised. That wasn't enough power to completely vaporize the blonde. Jin Yu stiffened when a voice from behind him said, No. Even as he turned, he knew it was too late to do anything. He was too slow. Jin Yu felt a sharp pain in his right side. He looked down and was shocked to see that his right arm had been torn off at the shoulder, with a lot of blue blood pouring from the stump. With a pull, Naruto turned him around, and his hand flew up to grab him by the throat. How did he stay alive? Jin Yu was scared, and his eyes were darting all over the place. I know I hit him with that attack. If I hadn't, it wouldn't have gone off. Pushing away his crazy thoughts, he brought his other arm forward and fired a key blast right into Naruto's face, or at least he tried to. No matter how hard he tried to blow the blonde's head off his shoulders, nothing happened. You must be wondering why you can't use your key. Naruto started by grinning at his opponent's scared, confused eyes. One of my abilities lets me completely cancel out an opponent's abilities by just touching them. As long as I hold on to you, you won't be able to use your key. Naruto let go of his opponent's hand and poured more chakra into his eyes, turning the diamond red as it moved into its third and final stage. He did this while grinning at the look of horror in his opponent's eyes. Well, then, the blonde went on, watching Jin Yu's eyes get bigger and bigger. You'll tell me what I want to know, he said. Hi, Naruto-sama. Jin Yu's answer was dull. And you're going to teach me something I need to know. Naruto went on, and the vortices on his hands started to glow as they turned on. Hi, Naruto-sama. 
Jinyu answered again. When Naruto got to his first destination, he found Frieza right where Jinyu said he would be, next to the bloody pond. As the name suggests, it was a big pond with a lot of what looked like blood and IT.AS Naruto got closer to his target, he spoke, drawing ideas from his hated ex-teammate. Oi, Frieza, he said in the most cocky and bossy way possible. Fight with me. Frieza raised his hand and put his pointer finger out, which was glowing white and pink. He didn't even look in his direction death beam. The energy beam moved much faster than Naruto could even track, let alone move, and went right through his heart. The blonde noticed that Frieza had great aim. Bastard! Naruto yelled, going back to his old ways to irritate the alien with tails even more. You made my shirt look bad. This caught Frieza's attention, since he thought his opponent would be dead, or at least deader, since they were in hell. He looked at Naruto, frowned, and his eyes flashed with anger. Go away, boy. You're lucky to have made it through that attack. He then turned back to the bloody pool and completely forgot about the blonde. Naruto just stood there, clenching his teeth in frustration. He could feel Luchi's anger trying to break out of his mind. How dare this, this, this cocky jerk just ignore me like that. Naruto thought of a growl and his eyes flashed red as he used his dujitsu. Ugh, he makes me think of that Uchiha jerk. Flashback, hey Sakura-chan, want to go on a date later? You know, to celebrate being on the same team? Naruto asked excitedly, grinning brightly. They had been assigned to their teams an hour ago and were now waiting for their sensei to show up. Go away, Baka. Who would ever want to go on a date with you? Just leave me alone. You're interrupting my time with Sasuke Kuen. Sakura shouted, glaring at the blonde before going back to obling her crush, who proceeded to completely ignore her, jumping on the desk in front of the Uchiha Naruto glared at. His rival angrily. I don't see what's so great about you, team. Fight me so I can show Sakura-chan that I'm loads better than you. Without even glancing at the blonde, the Uchiha threw out his hand and Sucker punched him in the face, sending him crashing to the floor. Ha! Ah. Serves that Baka right. You're so cool, Sasuke Kuen. Sakura squealed with stars in her eyes. End of flashback, thinking about the Uchiha brought up more and more memories of his homeworld, and with each passing second, Naruto could feel his anger growing until he felt like he was going to explode, like he could just scream out in anger. As he got more and more angry, he could feel his key moving faster and faster, brushing against his skin as if it wanted to get out. Just like Jinyu's memories had shown him, Ki's emotions, especially anger and rage, were a part of him. The angrier he got, the stronger and easier to control his key became. It was a bit like the QB's chakra in that way, and Naruto was quite experienced with that form of power. Frieza turned around quickly when he felt a big surge of power from behind. The power was coming from the boy with blonde hair who was standing behind him. It was more power than he would have expected from a child who looked so weak. This boy was very good at hiding his power. One second, he had less energy than a Cyberman, and the next, he was surrounded by a dark blue aura of raw power. From what he could tell, the blonde seemed to have as much power as that scion monkey from Namek. Rot. Naruto screamed in anger, and his anger grew as he kept thinking about his memories and drawing on his large store of ki. He could feel the power bursting from within him, strengthening every cell that passed through and increasing his power. He also felt his own anger overpower and absorb Luchi's, adding it to his rage and increasing his power further. Naruto looked at Frieza's shocked face as the last of his ki left his reserves and moved through his body. You should be proud, Frieza, because I'll use this power for the first time on you. The blonde laughed, his mind clear and focused, but his anger and power were still there. His key helped him keep his mind on task. Even though he was angry and powerful, Naruto used the power that was flowing through him to make key balls in each hand and start throwing them at Frieza. This was a simple technique he had learned from Jinyu's mind. Due to his lack of experience, his key blasts were much slower than Jinyu's. This made it easy for Frieza to avoid them, but they were much more powerful, causing big explosions and leaving behind craters. How is he so strong for his age? Frieza thought as he looked at the shape of his opponent. Well, it doesn't matter, he's still much weaker and less skilled than I am, and I'm not going to lose to a kid. As soon as the blonde stopped firing key blasts, Frieza got closer to him and fought him in close quarters, making the blonde's movements look like a blur. Naruto could feel his body moving much faster and hitting much harder now that his key had been unlocked. Despite the fact that Frieza was moving much faster than Jinyu had been, Naruto found that he could easily keep up now. He and Frieza were disappearing and reappearing all over the landscape. 
Each time they reappeared, they exchanged powerful blows, which the blonde would have thought was impossible just a few minutes before .AT last. Naruto was able to hit Frieza hard enough to send the alien with the tail flying into the side of a mountain. Naruto used his key again to make a large ball of energy. He used the information Jiraiya had given him to make a raisin gan. The Powerball was at least five times bigger than his usual raisin gan. It was made of pure physical energy, and the way it moved in his palm was very inspiring. Spiraling Key Sphere Naruto jerked his hand back and jumped toward Frieza's shape. The alien had dug himself out of the crater he had made. When Frieza saw the technique coming toward him, his eyes grew wide with fear, and his instincts made him move away. Frieza's instincts saved his life because they helped him quickly dodge and avoid the worst of the technique. He watched with wide eyes as the technique hit the ground next to him. The key-based raising gun blew up with a loud bang, destroying much of the area around it and sending the two fighters flying. Both of them were shocked by what had happened. Oh wow! Naruto stared wide-eyed at the huge hole that his technique had made. That was pretty sweet. I've seen better, someone yelled, drawing the attention of the blondes, up, his eyes shot open wide when he saw Frieza's form hovering in the air. His whole body was covered in a pinkish-white energy aura. Oh, shit. Naruto said, knowing that this was not a good sign. Indeed. Frieza laughed and had a cocky grin on his face. Death Comet. The aura flashed and grew a few inches in size before sending multiple waves of energy at the blonde. When the waves hit the ground, they exploded, and they followed the blonde as he ran across the barren landscape. In the chase that followed, Naruto ran as fast as he could to get away from Frieza's technique, which destroyed the land for miles around .AT some point. The blonde's luck ran out, and he was hit by a wave of ki, then another, and another, and another. Over and over again, the blasts hit him, and each one exploded and destroyed everything around the blonde. After a few seconds, the blast stopped, and Frieza made his way to the ground while grinning. Frieza smiled at the crater he had made, but most of it was hidden by a huge cloud of dust, so he went back to the bloody pond. His moment of fun was over. Huh, that was a pretty good attack, a voice Frieza knew said, making him turn around with wide eyes. With a burst of power, the dust cloud was blown away, revealing Uzumaki Naruto's unharmed body. He had a wide grin on his face. How? Frieza snarled, and his angry eyes lit up. How did you make it this far? Before the blonde could answer, Frieza let out a furious scream and hit him, fully intending to kill him. He shot blast after blast of ki at the blonde, but she didn't move. The blasts exploded when they hit her, but it didn't hurt her. As the energy washed off his diamond hard skin, Naruto smiled and slowly rose off the ground. He used both his key and the moon step technique of the Rokushiki to fly without wings. Once the blonde was in the air, he shot forward at much faster speeds than before. He disappeared from view and reappeared behind Frieza. Dodging the powerful tail that lashed out at his head, Naruto grabbed hold of it and began to spin, dragging Frieza along as he did so. Ignoring the angry shout of his opponent, Naruto let go of him and sent him flying. He grinned widely as Frieza crashed into another mountainside. I in a burst of speed, the blonde was hovering a few meters above where Frieza had crashed, and his whole body had turned into osmium, which is the densest, heaviest substance that the alchemist world knows of. With that, he dropped to the ground, smashing into the ground and destroying the entire mountain in the resulting explosion. Naruto smiled as he looked at the bloody smear that used to be Frieza. The impact had turned him into a purple smear. Oh, the alien wouldn't stay dead for long. He would come back to life, since this was the afterlife. Still, it was enough for Naruto to get exactly what he wanted. Kneeling next to Frieza's biggest mark, Naruto turned on his vortices for the second time that day and began to absorb his opponent's blood and ki. Well, that was fun, Naruto said with a laugh as he hopped out of the huge crater, which was already starting to heal and reform. However, that was way too easy. I guess that's what happens when you think your opponent is weaker than they really are. But with the way I acted at the beginning, I wouldn't take me seriously either. The blonde took off into the sky with a laugh and looked for a nice, quiet place to train. Even though it was over quickly, that fight was pretty tough. You might have made it harder for me to win if you had avoided my death ball instead of fighting against it, Naruto said as his vortices began to spin. Well, I couldn't do it unless I used my other skills. Frieza got ten times as strong after absorbing Vegeta's power. 
His body got stronger, he got 10 times as much energy, and his anger and pride got 10 times stronger. Before he calmed down, it took him over 6 hours of punching big boulders with just his own strength. He had to heal his arms 3 times, but he had also turned over 30 boulders into dust. He then spent an hour getting rid of all the memories he didn't need. 3 techniques were all he kept. The Final Flash, another planet destroyer which he would enjoy testing, the Big Bang Attack, a powered down version of the Death Ball which was faster to create and deploy, the Destructo Disc, a disc shaped attack that was fast to create and launch and was great for cutting through objects from a distance, Naruto thought about keeping the fusion dance and using it with one of his clones, but he quickly gave up on the idea for two important reasons. First, he didn't want to take a chance because he didn't know what could happen. Second, it looked really, really stupid, and he didn't feel the need to lower himself in that way. Even if no one was watching, Naruto decided it was time to leave this universe after two weeks of practicing his many techniques and getting a better handle on his increased energy levels. He also had to stay away from a very angry Frieza and Vegeta, who were both looking for him everywhere. Before that, though, he went back to Yama's office to brag and annoy the troll. When the troll tried to crush him, he disappeared in a flash of red light. When Naruto got back to the familiar halls of the multiverse, he hummed to himself as he looked at the newest door, which was the way to his next destination. The door was all white, the whitest he had ever seen, and it had a single weapon painted on it. Naruto's mind came up with a halberd. Naruto took a look at the plaque because he had a good idea where this door would lead. Once again, his guesses were right, Bleach Universe Realm 5. With a grin, he opened the door and entered the room, a cheerful skip in his step. This is going to be fun, entering the room, he was met with yet another white expanse, not unlike that of the Full Metal Alchemist realm, except for the single obsidian throne several meters away. Damn it, not again, glancing around, he noticed that the realm doors were all lined up around the door he just entered through, three doors on the left side and two on the right. Another glance around showed that he was completely alone in this void, the throne was empty and there was no god appearing before him, quite different when compared to the universes he'd visited. Shrugging to himself, he decided to take this as a good sign and move forward, namely through a door and into a separate realm. After a glance over the multiple doors, he chose to simply close his eyes and pick one at random, his fingers landing on the second door from the left. The door was pitch black in color with a purple plaque affixed to the center, golden words etched across its surface, Bleach Universe Realm 2, Divergence after Aizen fails to recover the Hogyoku, he is deserted by his army, forcing him to flee both the Soul Society and Hueco Mundo. No Aizen to deal with, that makes this so much easier. Naruto mused, grabbing the doorknob. It's too bad, though, because I really wanted to break his nose. Naruto walked through a doorway and fell to the ground for the second time in less than a month. This time, the doorway was several hundred feet above the ground. The blonde had been in a similar situation before, so he used his key to stop falling. He hovered in the air and was able to stay in the air. When the blonde looked down, he saw that he was floating a few meters above a sea of white sand. He knew right away that this was the silver desert of Hueco Mundo. Rawr. The only thing that saved the blonde from being eaten by a rampaging Jillian was a quick move to the side. The large beast ran past him, its mouth snapping shut on where he had been. Then he realized he wasn't alone. Behind him, a group of about a dozen Jillians were bent over a torn up body of another Jillian and eating IT.AT least. They were until one of them broke away with a loud roar and got their attention. Three Jillians opened their mouths wide at the same time, and a red power orb began to spin between their lips. Oh shit! Naruto yelled and just barely dodged the hollow flashes that were coming at him. After avoiding the first three beams, he had to keep moving because the rest of the Jillians were trying to eat him. Their mouths snapped shut with loud cracks. F it! Naruto growled and made the cross-shaped seal with his hands. No one tries to eat me, you fools! Get ready to die. Shadow clone technique. 20 clones appeared around him with a light puff of smoke. They didn't waste any time and ran away from where he was, drawing the Jillians away. The clones served as a distraction, so Naruto climbed high above the crowd and started to gather his key. He was looking forward to the slaughter that was about to happen, and some of his feelings were starting to show. With one thought, he turned his whole right arm into a huge blade that was an exact copy of Zabuza's Kubikirabak, except it was more than 12 feet long and 3 feet wide. The blade was made of carbon atoms that had been made harder, making it stronger and harder than a diamond. 
The edge of the blade was sharpened to a point. Naruto flew right through the group of hollows, slashing and stabbing masks as he went. He did this by holding the huge blade above his head. As his blade killed more and more hollows, the rest of the hollows started to ignore him and his clones. They would rather tear apart and eat the bodies of their dead friends. When the short battle was over, Naruto just shrugged and moved his arm back to normal. As he turned away from the Jillians who were eating, his clones scattered. Taking a quick look around, he could see the fortress of Las Noches in the distance. It was a huge building in the middle of the empty desert. IT took him a few minutes to get to the fortress. When he got there, the blonde stopped at the fortress walls and looked down at the sands below. Even though he was putting out a different kind of energy, it looked like the Aaron car in the fortress had picked up on it, since one of them was steadily making its way to him. As he landed a few feet from the wall, Tia Harabel, the third strongest member of the Espada, came up to him. Even though she didn't show any emotion on her face, Naruto could see the burning curiosity in her eyes. Her mask wasn't as good as she thought. Who are you? Harabel stopped a few feet away and asked as her fraction began to form around her. What do people do in Hueco Mundo? Hello, miss, Naruto started by hinting at her name, even though he already knew it. Harabel, she said without pausing, and her eyes seemed to narrow. Miss Harabel, Naruto said next, smiling gently. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I'm here to fight Okuyora Cipher. That made her face show some emotion, and her eyes grew wide in surprise. I'll tell him about it. She quickly vanished with a buzz of static, and her faction looked at each other and then joined her. Naruto just shrugged and sat down in the air, humming to himself as he waited for Harabel to come back. After a few minutes, she came back with her mask on and her fraction gone. She just raised an eyebrow when she saw him hovering. Follow me to the arena, where he will be waiting for you, she said as she turned and walked toward the fortress. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and decided to go with them. Well, that wasn't too hard. Naruto said something behind her back. I thought I'd have to fight more to get what I want. We hollows have been around for a long time. Haribel turned her head toward him and spoke back. It gets pretty boring around here. Your fight with Okuyora will be a lot of fun to watch. Also, she said after a short pause, You're very different from any other human or Shinigami we've met. We're excited to see how you fight. A few minutes later, they got to the arena. On the way, they passed a group of lingering Arankar who were all watching him closely while they talked. The arena was just a large, walled-off desert area with seats carved into the walls. All of the seats were filled with hollows who were waiting for the battle to start. Okuyora Cipher stood in the middle of the arena with his eyes closed and both hands in his pockets. It was clear that he was waiting for his opponent that as soon as they walked into the arena, Haribel disappeared with a buzz of static and went straight to the stands without saying anything else. Naruto shook his head and walked into the arena, making his way steadily toward Okuyora. When he looked around, he saw that every member of the Espada was there. They all gave him a curious look, even Stark, who was always too lazy to pay attention. When Naruto got to the middle of the arena, Okuyora opened his eyes and looked at his opponent with curious emerald eyes. Human, how do you know me? His voice was cold and he didn't show any emotion as he asked. I don't believe we have ever been acquainted. We haven't. Naruto smiled widely in response. I heard your name mentioned in the desert, so I decided to come and fight you. Is that really so? Okuyora asked, showing no emotion in his eyes or voice. Just how did you end up in the desert of Hueco Mundo? Naruto thought, great, another moody team, just my luck, and his smile grew smaller. That, he started, building up the tension, but Okuyora didn't seem to care. That's a secret. Then I'll have to make you tell me the secret by force. Okuyora's words were clear. Get ready for war. Naruto dropped into a fighting stance while still smiling, but his opponent didn't change. Both of them stood still for a few minutes. Then, out of nowhere, Naruto felt a light pressure slam down on his shoulders. It wasn't painful or limiting, but it was still very noticeable. So, you can handle the spiritual pressure I'll put on you. Okuyora thought about it and raised an eyebrow. You really are a strange person. Naruto said, thanks, and then made the first move. Shave. In a blur of movement, he disappeared, only to come back an instant later with a loud thud and his foot stuck in his opponent's neck. The other man didn't even seem to be bothered by this. 
Okuyora didn't show any emotion on his face, so he just looked at Naruto's leg and thought, You hit harder than any other person I know. Okuyora said something, but he didn't know that his opponent could hit a lot harder. But not hard enough to get through my iron body technique. With that, he pulled his right hand out of his pocket and hit the blonde in the middle of the chest. Naruto turned his skin into an unbreakable carbon compound, stood still, and let the Aaron Cars blow hit him. This made the blow ineffective, which made the hollow's face show some emotion, shock. It looks like both of you need to hit harder. Naruto laughed in a mocking and happy way. Naruto used his opponent's shock to his advantage. He turned his right pointer finger into a metal spike and hit him in the chest. Finger gun. Naruto took great amount of pleasure in the look on his opponent's face as his finger pierced right through his iron body, breaking through flesh and bone and leaving a small hole right below the Aaron car's hollow hole. Okuyora buzzed away from the blonde and looked at him with a wary eye. Word of advice, Okuyora cipher, Naruto said with a laugh as his finger went back to its normal shape. Don't underestimate me, you just might die. Yes, you are correct. I was very wrong to think you couldn't do it. Okuyora answered, straightening his back as the wound hissed shut, leaving behind a patch of bare skin. I will start to take you seriously from now on. With that, he pulled out his sword. An aura of power in the color emerald appeared around him, and the pressure on Naruto's shoulder grew. Joey the blonde muttered, standing a fair distance away from the battle. Nine members of the Espada watched the battle in mild surprise, a noticeable gap between them and the other Arankar. Wow, the kid really did make Okuyora pull out his sword. Grimjow pointed out, and his teeth sparkled in the light as he gave a big grin. I would too if my punch didn't bother a person. When Neutra answered, he had the same grin as his fellow Espada. Especially if that person was able to cut through my iron body, I'd really get mad. The iron body of Okuyora is also one of the strongest among us Espada, second only to mine. Yes, that person is strange in some way. Stark said something while yawning. At first, I thought he was hiding his Riatsu, but none of his attacks, not even his movement skill, had any Riatsu in them. No one is that good at hiding their Riatsu. I agree, he either doesn't have Riatsu or hasn't learned how to use it yet. Berrigan grunted and focused his eyes. I wonder how he got into Hueco Mundo, though, since there was no sign of a portal opening in the desert. Naruto had spent the last few minutes dodging around Okuyora. The Aaron car moved so fast that it was almost impossible for Naruto to keep up, so he had to rely on his instincts and reflexes to avoid the other man's blade. He could have turned on his Dujitsu and gotten better at seeing, but he was having way too much fun. This fight was fun, after all. He was mostly dodging because it was fun. If he didn't want to, he could just let the blade brush against his almost impossible to cut skin. It might have been a little hypocritical of him to not only underestimate his opponent but also play with him, but he didn't care much because he was almost immortal and couldn't die from making a mistake like that. Even though he could sometimes dodge Okuyora's attacks, he couldn't find any openings in his style. The fourth Espada was a master swordsman, and Naruto was excited to learn from him. Point five minutes went by, and the blonde avoided every blow Okuyora threw until Okuyora finally said, There. After doing the same pattern several times, Okuyora added a new move at the end, which completely caught the blonde by surprise. He brought the blade down hard, cutting off the blonde's left arm at the elbow. When he heard that, Naruto jumped back and pretended to be shocked by his missing limb while blood poured out and stained the sand in the desert. Give up, man, you're missing an arm. Okuyora said as he put his sword away. As you can see, you can't keep getting away from me. You can't win. Naruto glared at the hollow, pretending to be angry while his eyes lit up with a smile. I told you not to underestimate me, the blonde yelled. He raised his other arm and fired several key blasts into Okuyora's chest, sending the Espada flying. What in the hell? Grimjow yelled, his eyes big with surprise. Those weren't Kido's spells. Yes, there was no Riatsu in any of those attacks at all. Sale said something, and his eyes lit up with amusement and interest. What kind of person is he? I don't KN Dash Harabel's answer was cut off by a powerful surge of energy in the arena, which sent a shockwave out from where Naruto was standing. Ra! Naruto yelled, and his key levels went up as he kept getting stronger, using every bit of power he had stored up. What's that vibe? Okuyora was curious as he looked closely at the dark blue aura around his opponent. He was about to pull out his sword again. 
He had learned from his past mistakes not to underestimate the blonde, but just as he was about to do so, the blonde disappeared in a blur. He's getting faster. What's giving him that energy? The hollow was thinking when he suddenly felt pain in his right shoulder. A quick look showed that he was missing his arm, which had been torn off at the shoulder. His face showed that he was shocked, and he took off his emotionless mask. What the hell just happened? A sound brought his attention to the front, where Naruto was standing with his missing arm in the hand of a blonde. Hollow, you should give up because you've lost an arm. Naruto laughed in a light, mocking way. It's hopeless. How did he do that? Even though he doesn't have Riatsu, his speed and strength have increased by more than 10 times, to the point where he could tear through my iron body with no trouble. Okuyora thought for a while, keeping an eye on his opponents. What aura was that? What kind of power does he use? Human, you should listen to your own advice. Don't think too little of me. Okuyora answered, and his arm grew back with a flash of power and a spray of blood. I don't know how you got faster and stronger, but it looks like I can't wait any longer, so get ready. With that, he pulled out his sword, and his reacts arose as he got ready for something. You shouldn't have been shy to begin with. Naruto laughed and grinned in a dark way. I need to get this done quickly. Naruto thought about things while keeping a close eye on Okuyora and how the Hollow's Riatsu kept getting stronger. I'm losing way too much blood from this wound. If I don't pass out from blood loss, he'll start to wonder why. When Okuyora moved, the blondes all looked in his direction. The Hollow raised his blade and pointed it at Naruto. Okuyora spoke as his Riatsu rose again. In close, I can't believe Okuyora has to use his Resurrection, someone said. Haribel was very surprised by the skills this human was showing. Who is this kid to be able to push the fourth strongest of the Espada this far? Stark wondered, and even though he looked lazy, his eyes were focused. Heh, the kids don't stand a chance, Okuyora can't lose. Yami gave a smirk, sure that his fellow Espada was very good at what he did. Blackwing Great Demon Okuyora's blade exploded in black and green Riatsu with a burst of power. The energy surrounded the Aaron car and shot up into the air, where it formed a black cloud from which green Riatsu fell. After a few seconds, the rain stopped, and the aura faded away, revealing Okuyora, the Aaron car, standing in all the glory of his freed form. As Okuyora's freed form came into view, Naruto felt a lot of spirit pressure slamming down on his shoulders, trying to crush him. Even though it was bigger than the first flare of Riatsu, it wasn't anything he couldn't handle. His dormant Ryurioku was stronger than his opponents, but he didn't mind acting weak by stumbling and falling to one knee. When you had the chance, you should have given up. Okuyora spoke as he moved steadily toward the blonde. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill you, yet. We have a lot of questions for you, so I'll just make sure you can't run away. With a flash of power, the Aaron car made a green energy lance appear in his hand. The hollow disappeared and appeared in front of the blonde in a flash, holding his weapon high above his head. Lance of the Lighting He's gotten faster, Naruto said as he got ready to attack back. As soon as the weapon fell, Naruto spiked his key and dashed to the side. He just missed getting hit and grabbed the Aaron car by the wrist. Okuyora screamed in his mind, what, as his aura and Riatsu disappeared in an instant. What did he do to my Ryurioku? I can't feel my power. In a panic, Okuyora raised his other hand and swung at the blonde's neck, hoping to hit his one-armed opponent. However, the blonde's tough skin stopped the blow. It looks like we humans have stopped moving forward. Okuyora watched as he frantically tried to use his Ryurioku, but it didn't work. I, in response, Naruto laughed and finally let his arm heal, which surprised all the hollows who had gathered. Without stopping, he put all of his ki into the arm and thrust it forward, piercing the hollow's chest and pinning him to the arm. Hollow, you never had a chance. Naruto whispered. He liked how his opponent's face looked when he was shocked or hurt. I could have finished quickly, but you made me think of someone I really dislike. Then Naruto pulled his arm back, ripping a piece of Okuyora's spine out. Renew that, he said to the hollow as it died, blood and gore dripping from his hand. As the crowd watched in shock, Naruto took in Okuyora's blood and Riatsu and got what he needed from the hollow. He was surprised to see that Okuyora was actually getting better. It was slower than before, but Okuyora was still getting better. As he stood, Naruto looked up and laughed as the other Espada and Arankar dropped into the arena, their faces a mix of shock and anger. You don't really think we'll let you go, do you? 
Neutra asked, his massive blade slung over one shoulder. Not after you were so close to killing one of us. Naruto didn't say a word as he broke up Okuyora's samples and took them in. The Hollows were surprised to see that his body seemed to get bigger before going back to normal. Then they all gasped as a huge amount of spiritual pressure hit them all at once. The weaker Aaron car fell to the ground, but the others were able to shake it off. It's impressive for someone who just learned Riatsu. Stark said something, which made his fellow Aaron car look at him funny. Is that what you did? You unlocked your own Ryurioku by using Okuyoras. Naruto kept quiet while grinning widely. Oi, answer him. Grimjow yelled and grabbed the handle of his sword in anger. Naruto laughed and opened his mouth to say something. Cromwell Initiative, full press release. The Hollows just gave him curious looks, but he didn't care. Instead, he focused on the reddish glow coming from his hands, which meant that the seals were breaking and he could use all of his power. Without warning, an incredible amount of pressure hit every hollow there. All but the top two Espada fell to their knees, and everyone below the sixth rank fell asleep. Even Berrigan and Stark, who are both known for having terrifying Ryurioku levels, were shaking where they stood. I hate to fight and then run. Naruto laughed, and his voice was happy and upbeat. But I don't really feel like killing you all right now, ta-ta. Black Cavity with a flick of his arm, he made the needed portal. The fabric of reality split and a dark void appeared, which was a very useful trick. Stark looked down at his fellow hollows and wondered, who was he? Some of them were already feeling better after the spiritual pressure had gone away. Time skip one month later, after his fight with the fourth Espada and his quick escape from the army of Arancars, Naruto came out of his portal in the forest of Minos, which was as far away from Los Noches as he could get. He chose this place to train because he wanted to stay away from the Arancar. His ki, chakra, and Ryurioku had all grown a lot since he had been absorbed. Naruto went through Okuyora's memories and put them in order. He found that Okuyora's natural apathy was a great counter to the emotions of his previous victims, especially their anger and bloodlust, even though he was used to keeping those emotions under control. This small piece of information made him decide to keep most of Okuyora's memories, since centuries of apathy would help him if he ever needed to absorb more memories. The first two weeks of his training was spent playing around with his Ryurioku and mastering Okuyora's main techniques, namely the Hollow Flash, Royal Hollow Flash, Black Hollow Flash, and the weaker but faster Hollow Bullet. Aside from his offensive techniques, he spent a lot of time practicing the sound technique. He was able to combine it with the Rokushiki shave technique, which gave him speeds like instant teleportation at full power. Unfortunately for him, the first time he tried out the technique, it caused his body to completely heal, so he had to change into something stronger before he could move at those speeds. The probe circuit was the last thing he learned. He used it to improve his sensing skills and his mental abilities, which he didn't use very often. It let him sense energy levels and mines from far away. As for the rest of Okuyora's techniques, he was asked to get rid of the iron body and negation techniques because they were defensive and didn't help him. He had already shown that his shape shifting skills were much better than the iron body techniques defense, and if he ever needed to, he could easily make barriers that couldn't be broken through, making both techniques useless. Naruto's training in Ryurioku was done, so he moved on to his physical training, which consisted of using Okuyora's sword style. It took him a few days of practice to get the style to fit his body, but it was well worth it because it let him go from being an untrained initiate to Okuyora's master level in a matter of days. Naruto decided he would need a weapon to fight with, so he decided to make one himself using his skills and information he stole. He just had to rip off one of his arms and turn it into the blade he wanted. This was much easier than making one from scratch. As for his weapon, he chose to use a gun blade, which is a sword with a handle that looks like a gun. When the weapon's trigger was pulled, a shockwave was sent through the whole thing. This made the blade vibrate quickly, which did more damage. IT was a pretty scary weapon, which is why it was given the name Dread. When his month of training was over, Naruto was more than ready to move on. In a flash of red light, he left the dark forest of Minos behind. Naruto was surprised when he came back to the multiverse and found himself in a room instead of the endless hallway he was used to. But this was a room he knew very well, since it was the last place he'd seen the Jubi. He looked around and saw that no one else was in the room. This meant that Kami and the Shinigami were still away, and it was likely that Jubi was still resting from his escape. Naruto decided to go ahead with his plans even though none of his patron gods were there to greet him or talk to him. He made his way slowly to the door closest to him. 
It was a sky blue wooden door with a plaque that said one word, home, chuckling darkly. The blonde threw open the door and walked through it without stopping, his whole body vibrating with joy and excitement. As Naruto closed the door behind him, three figures appeared around the room's single light. In the blink of an eye, their shapes disappeared, sharing a glance. The three smirked and took their seats, the dark-haired male standing a moment later and heading towards a shadowed corner. I'll get the popcorn, 